Hey guys, welcome to the stream. This is Rod. We got to coming to you live from the Hangar Billards and Sports Lounge. We're here at 121 Skirfield Boulevard, and we're here for the Sunday Open Eight Ball Tournament. And this is an A side quarterfinal matchup between Sam Campbell and Blair Lawson, and they're just in the middle of the match right now. Uh, that's Sam Campbell at the table, currently down two to one, but he just made the eight ball ties up the match at two. Sam's racing to four, Blair Lawson is racing to six, or sorry, racing to five. Got to correct that. Uh, so Sam Campbell's racing to five, Blair Lawson racing to six, and we'll bring up their Fargo rates for you guys here. Fargo rate number one is 475 for Sam Campbell and a 574 for Blair Lawson. And the match is tied at two right now. We'll get that clock going. Let's get the clock going for now. And I'm playing a match in the background, so I'll be back. But I'll, I'll update the scores in between. And maybe I'll do this right now, too. I'll put on here that I'm not. There's no commentary at the moment. Okay, that's good. All right, so I'm going to be playing a match in the background, and I'll put this up here for you guys so you know that I'm not here at the moment. Um, I'm going to change the setting on this camera real quick to make it a little bit better for you guys. I, I wasn't going to play today, I swear to God. Like, I brought my cues. I don't know. A part of me said, well, just in case if I end up playing, I'll bring my cues. Um, but I wasn't going to play today. And here I am, I'm playing. Okay, so that's better. There we go. All right, so that's uh, Sam Campbell at the table. Tied up the match at two. He's racing to five, needs three. Blair needs four. And uh, I'll be back.
All right, so Blair won that game, puts him in the lead three to two. Uh, I'm playing on the table on the top left of the screen. Playing against Dave. Dave's playing right now. He's shooting at the table. The sound sounds a little weird. Let me try to fix this a little bit. I hope that's better. Five minutes into the match, but they've already been playing for about 15, 20 minutes prior to that. Smash and break from Sam Campbell. He'll get a chance to get going here. Oh, nothing went in. All right, so it's Blair that gets a chance to get going. I get a chance to get going in the back there. It's my shot, my opponent. I think missed the shot. So I'll go play. I'll be back.
Oh no, I missed, missed the shot to the corner, perfect shape to the side. What's up, guys? I'm just joining here. Billiards, how you doing, Al? Kathy, welcome to the stream. Bit of a tight situation here on the six ball for Blair. I want my first rack over there, my opponent shooting right now. Play the safety. My turn to go shoot, so I'll be back. I'll wait till Blair makes the shot first or tries to make the shot first before I switch up. Gonna miss the shot. And he's gonna scratch. Ball in half for Cam Sambo. I'll be right back. Or Sam Campbell. I'll say it backwards. I'll be right back. Score is 3-3 now. Race to three for Blair Lawson. Race to two for Sam Campbell. And it's my opponent, Sean, there at the table, so I'll chill here until he, cheat, until he shoots. I uh, went and tied up his 10 ball over there to make a little bit of trouble. And fortunately, on top of that, the uh, three ball went and rolled up on top of his 11 ball. So there are a couple of things to deal with. Rack number seven, and Blair's going to scratch off the break, but he's got a pretty good spread. And a nice opportunity here for Sam to be able to take the lead in this match and also get on the head. Let me know if there's any issues with the uh, sound or picture, and then I'll, I'll adjust those things for you guys. Usually I do all that stuff right away as soon as I get in, but I didn't, I didn't do any of that today. Oh, it's my shot at the table. I gotta go shoot, I'll be back.
There's some candles on the hill. Blair Lawson has to win three games.
All right, so they're gonna send. Yeah, good for you, man. Uh, they're gonna send me another match right away. Uh, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Cam's playing against Brian. Jeff and Guy are playing right now. My match is tied at one. I got a ball in hand. I'll put I'll put it on my table for now, just because I know what the score is. Um, and then as soon as they give me a TV table matchup, then I'll put it right back on the TV table. And I'm not going to put the Fargo rates up because like, as soon as they give me a match on the TV table, I'm going to switch up. I'll be back. Oh, no way. I'm gonna fix that camera again. No, I don't have any. Uh, did you ask Kevin? My opponent is tip fell off of the off the barrel, and it's the only cue he has. So he's got to see if he can find some crazy glue. But if you put some crazy glue on it, you gotta let it sit, or it's gonna fall off anyway. So I'm not sure what he's thinking. All right, I'm going to go shoot.
everyone.
All right, so we got a live mini table matchup for you guys here now. It's just starting now. Uh, score was four to one for me on that one. Uh, this is a fresh match. Very first rack. It's on you versus Sam Campbell, and it's a six-four race. My table is still in the background, so you know um, what the score is over there. It's currently four to one, and we'll put up your guys' uh, these guys' Fargo rates real quick. I think I still had Sam's in here somewhere. Yeah, so he's set up still, and you, I think, it's a six eighteen. Six nineteen. That's on you at the table right now. All right. So there's the Fargo rates. That's the race. We'll adjust the camera setting again. A little too bright for my liking, and for some reason, this camera always keeps doing whatever it wants to do. So I'll just correct it. That makes it a little better. All right, so there's a race for you guys. It's a 6-4 race, first rack of the match. Sam Campbell at the table wearing the hoodie. Hanyu wearing a black shirt and a glove. One of them's wearing a glove, one of them isn't. So Hanyu's wearing a glove.
Yeah, it's one nothing for Hany or uh, Sam right now. And he was at the table. When I stopped that match, hang on, got a fresh timer on this one. You know what? Maybe I'll bring the timer down for me. I'm not here right now, so. Uh, maybe I'll bring the cue ball down for now, too. But we'll be using the cue ball today. It's my break on the other table, but I'm just waiting for my opponent to come back, which is coming back right now. I'll be back.
playing right away.
Yeah, I know he's playing. That's why I thought it crashed. All right, I'm back. Um, all right, so I won my match. I'm I'm playing somebody next. It's a it's a little guy. I have no idea how old he is. I'm like nine or ten. It's the little guy I see in the top right corner that's practicing right now. That's the kid I'm playing. And now the thing about that kid is like you could just see there he just made a nice shot. The kid can shoot. He's he's not like a run out. Kid, he, he won't sit there and run every table on you, but the kid can shoot. He can pop balls. Anyways, uh, long story short, he goes to two, I go to six. And now that's something that normally I wouldn't play on a TV table because it's just, it's way too much pressure, man. You make one mistake to win the first rack or the second rack, you're on the hill. Tough, tough climb. Um, but the owner of the hangar wanted to have it on the stream because he thinks it's fun. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be fun for me, but I, I'm going to do it. So me and the little guy, Beck Rogerson, are going to be playing a matchup after this on the TV table. What's up, Warren, man? How you doing? Says, I'm good here, Rod. Everything is fine. Evil Pagel says, shut up, boss Rod. What's up, Evil? Robert Griffith, what's happening, man? Happy Easter to you, too. I forgot to say happy Easter to my kids this morning. But they were kind of sleeping still, so... And I was in a rush to get here. I wanted to make sure that I got here at a decent time. I'm trying to make extra efforts lately. Saturday nights are always tough for me, though, because I'm tired, man. I'm usually doing a lot of work. Safety back. I'm going to give him a shot on the seven ball. Angle to be able to run into the two ball also. So. Oh, you can take the two ball now. That's what he's going to do. I don't know about that shot because, well, I guess he still has a six ball, so it's not too bad. But then you're kind of more or less forced to play a combo. Can you see the three? Oh, yeah, he played the combo. Nice shot, man. no i try i tried to not walk back yeah i know i made sure that like if i was if i came here update and you were shooting that i didn't go back till you were done yeah i did move your chalk once so so you know that could have been sharking <laughs> Four two, Sam Campbell gets on the board again. It's two more to win the match. So does Hanyu, so it's a race to two. How's everybody doing today? Logan Roger says good turnout. Yeah, we have good competition, lots of people here. I'm not sure. I think it was uh well, let me go look. I'll go try to find the bracket for you guys too. Post the bracket up? No, they have not. Oh, yes, they did. Okay, so I'm going to share this bracket with you guys. Uh, we had six, 18 players today. Oh, and I shouldn't have played them. I told Kevin when he asked me, like, hey, you want to play? I said, no. Nah. I said, but, you know, if, if you need another player, I'll play. I said, how many you got? He says, I got 15. Said, okay, well, I said, I'll be your 16th player. I said, but if somebody else comes in, then I won't play. And then I'll take any team. So I sure don't play today, but it's all good. I'll share the bracket here for you guys also. What's up, Renan Salcedo? Welcome to the stream. Need some agua. 
It's going to be a tough match you got to play against this kid. Makes tough cuts. You see there, he just made a tough cut in the back. And that's all he's doing. He's working on tough shots. Oh, but he missed that one. Just because I was talking about it, right? Coming to this curse. It's dangerous, though. He looks innocent, you know, harmless. He's like cheering for you while you're shooting, you know. But then as soon as you give him a shot at the table, he's like a shark in the water, man. I hear the Jaws theme come on. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I'm like, oh no, the kid's at the table. Dangerous. But I, I had a, like a rough first match. Um, but my second match was a little bit cleaner. But this is tough, like 6-2. I can't make any mistakes, really. And, and I'm probably going to have to grind out this kid and playing a lot of safeties. I can't, I can't let him have the opportunities to do what he knows how to do. I gotta hold him in, under control. I gotta keep that lion in the cage. <laughs> That's one of the things that I didn't really have too much of lately was discipline alone, when to play safety. And I've been doing a little bit more of that today. So my game is getting a little bit better. But... Uh, the one thing that kind of hurts is that I'm usually getting the pace a little bit off, right? So I'm either going a little bit too far and leaving the shot with a difficult contact point or I'm hitting it too short uh, and not getting the safety at all. And that's all because the table is a fresh cloth, so it's a little bit faster and, and I haven't been able to adapt to the speed yet. My last match, I was able to adapt to the speed, okay? That's Beck's dad that's playing with him on that back right corner. Mm -hmm. Try to get below it and a little risky. Still got rewarded though, he still has a shot. I'll make the cue ball go around now, a couple of rails. Three rails would do good. Oh, not if he runs into that ball, though. Well, he still has a shot to the corner. We don't have to worry about scratching here at this angle. Gonna make the shot, and it's gonna go in. That's very nice. Oops, spilled the glass. I could have been really messy, some water here. Thankfully, I was able to get it. All right, so when you're on the hill now. It's a little intimidating thinking about playing the two, whether it's a kid or an adult, it makes no difference. The two is always bad because you make one mistake, you're in trouble. And then you start thinking to yourself, hey, don't make that one mistake, and then your game starts changing. Always a very challenging situation to be in. Rack number eight on you to break. Looking for a finish. Something went in. Was it the cue ball? Oh, that's a one. Dry breaks and bring Sam Campbell to the table. Good seeing you, man. Tom Hughes came out to play some pool today. Always nice seeing him. Oh, he's going to overcut that one. And he's lucky he didn't scratch the cue ball there. Could have been a poor situation for him, but 
And you has an opportunity, a lot of work, and a ball in hand is not available, so he'll have to grind his way into this one. First shot is to get something to shoot at, so I'm thinking we're going to try to draw off the rail and try to get above into the middle area, maybe shape up for the 11 to the top left corner. If you, if you get a little bit further up, then you can maybe make the shot on the 15 or the 12. The other option is to try to play through uh, one two rails and try to get onto the top of the table so you can maybe make the 15 ball to the right side middle pocket. But then you're, you're risking that you might get stuck behind that 11 ball. Oh, wait, he's low ball, so yeah, that's right. Sam made a ball first. Donnie's got low ball. That table's not too bad. As long as it gets up to the six ball, oh, wait, I don't think the six ball goes. Got the six, seven, and three all kind of piled up. It does look that maybe the seven, six combo could go. I can actually take that right now if it goes. You're going to look at it right now. Looks like it's a possibility. Gonna call the six ball. No, he makes it. Good shot. Take a look at that last shot. Not the one that he made prior to, but the shot on the Ippo was a really nice shot. Nice and perfect weight, good angle. Big bounce off the rail here, almost a little too tight, but he still has a shot on the seven ball. Still has an angle to work with so he can get back down for that two ball or try to get in for the one. He's trying to get back for the one using the rails here to have a little bit of angle around into that 11 ball. That should help him to slide down slightly for the two ball to the side. If not, he'll have the five ball. So he hit that a little too heavy. Still has a shot on the two and the five, so not in a bad situation, but gotta make a choice here. I know what I do for him. I go for the two. So you can make it to the corner, draw back a little bit, use the angle off that five ball to be able to come over naturally off the rail with some right hand spin for the eight ball at top left corner. It's come off the rail though. That's not good. So now you got to look at plan B, which is you got to get right back to where the cue ball is right now. That's the only spot that you can make the eight ball from. If he was on the eight ball right now, he wouldn't be stressed out. He'd be all right. But he's not. So that's where he's got to get back to. The other option is to try to play all the way forward and try to find that perfect window between the 11 and the 12 on the left side of that eight. And then pot the eight ball on the top right corner. There's a small window on the um, because you're playing on a springy table, it's kind of tough to judge the weight on that. You have to feel this one, and it's it's tough to feel the weight for the shot getting back to the right side cushion too. Gonna hit it with some extra pace, looking for that small window. Needs a big bounce here. Doesn't want it to scratch. I think he found the window. It looks to me like he doesn't have it from the camera angle, but he's calling the shot, so he must have it. It's in. That's for the match. 6-2, the final score. And I got to play the little guy now, the little monster sitting back there. Like, don't, don't judge me for my play. I'm going to play this kid. I'm going to treat him like I'm going to treat my own kid whenever we play at the table. I'm going to try to beat him. And that means safety play, whatever, whatever it takes. He's a two. If he was a four, I'd be like, okay, I'll give the kid a chance. You know, I, I want to see how he plays. He looks like he'd be cool, cool player. I don't want to take that chance with him. He's a two. It probably has a 600 Fargo. <laughs> All right, so I always put my name on the right, so I'll put my name on the right. Put the kid on the left, Beck Rogerson. I think it's double S.
think that's how it is, but I just don't know. Um, it, hurts, it hurts my heart when I press in two. The kid has to go to two. But it's okay, we all gotta start somewhere, right? Proper, what's the proper spelling, Roger? Is it, it's, is it Roger and then two S's? Yeah, yeah. I remember the two S's. I just couldn't remember if it was one G or what. No, whatever. Okay, so six two. All right. What you know your Fargo rate? Do you have a Fargo rate? Three ninety three. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. No sound. What do you mean no sound? I'm right here, Harold. Um. All right. So let's see. I gotta check this kid's uh, Fargo rate anyway. I'm back. Rogerson. It's gonna be a tough match. Two ninety two. Two ninety two. I'm a five eighty eight. I've been dropping man, I'm a five eighty eight. I wanna get back to six hundred, but I'm not playing like a six hundred lately. There's days that I do, days that I don't. Alright, so there's the Fargo rates. He goes to two, I go to six, and the slaughter begins one way or the other. I'll be right back. We got a chance to watch a little guy play it in. Scratch off the break for me. A little bit too much power. the shot to the corner eight balls tied up between the five and the four so he's got to break that out he's got a good shot here on the 14 ball a little bit of angle to work with but there's nothing really that needs to be broken out so he's just got to try not to change the table too much that's going to give him a shot at the 15 ball with an angle to be able to break out the eight ball now see if he's got that in him if he gets the rail though so he might just want to make the shot only Oh, and he broke it out. Nice little breakout. Has a shot on the 10 ball. He 
11 sitting by the side. We got a chance to come up the table off my break, too. Oh, I need a better shape than that, though. Nice potting, kid. I'm gonna call the bank corner. He's gonna turn the table over. My six balls tied up, so that's where the work is at for me. Everything else is kind of there. It looks like I might have to start off with that five ball, which is not what I want to do. I'll be back.
That wasn't a good shot. I wasn't trying to miss. Oh, look at that. It makes two and one. And the shot to the side pocket, too. Going out in style. I asked for that one. Oh, man. I thought he had it. I thought he had it. I'll be back. I got a little bit of luck on that one. Oh, my heart is racing right now, man. It's, it's intense playing against like two. <laughs> and this ain't your average two, man. This, this two can shoot like a four. This the shape isn't as good, right? But his his potting is amazing. And confidence too, because you know young kids like to play hard ball, right? They don't play none of that safety stuff. I'll I'll let you have the break again. I want to see his break. He wasn't happy about the break. Can I make the eleven? No. Dry break. All right, I'll be back. Hi, Michelle. Can you, can you hear me now, Harold? You got to turn on your, uh, your hearing aid, bro. <laughs> uh, what's up, Maddie Boy? Says, Happy Easter, Rod. Are you going to mic up at the... No, no I'm not going to... Well, I'll be here on the stream, talking on the stream, but I don't have a mic on, you know. What's up, Gwen? What says, Happy Easter to you, Rod, and your family. Thank you, guys. Happy Easter to you guys, too. I'll be right back.
That's for any writer. I'm going to try to run that one out. It was such a tight shot. And I kind of shot it like half of me wasn't really committed. I was still thinking about the shot while I shot it. One thing that I'm trying to work on right now because it's playoff time is that I'm going to stay um, engaged and mentally focused and, and try to deal with the negativity better too. There's, there's a lot of that stuff going on with me. But my game is starting to balance out a little bit. I my mean, 14 ball blocks all three of those balls, but once he makes that ball into that corner and opens up that 14 ball, it's all open for him. And I don't want that 14 to be my finish ball, but it's going to have to be. And look at this. It got even just a little bit tighter. Even a little bit tighter. Or maybe I can use a 12 to get onto the 14, then use a 13 ball to get out. Try that out. See if I can do it. in the next session.
Yeah. Killer of this kid. He's a killer. I can't give him anything. Oh, you played against Tracy? Fuck a farm to play. Don't think about me, man. Just let me be. I'll just stay on my side. You stay on your side. We're all good. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, see, you give this kid an open table, he's going to run you out, man. He looks innocent, but I'm telling you, he's not innocent. Dangerous kid. And I'm slowing down my pace and playing focus, so that's teaching him to kind of be focused and take his time and work things out instead of just shooting. You see, that's a difference right there. That's on the last one, he would have just shot, but now he's working things out. He sees that I'm working things out. So he's like, okay, well, I'm going to start working things out too. I just made this kid a little bit more dangerous. Made a really nice shot. Gonna end up tough here for the eight ball though. And so I'm impressed because there was two people that walked by and then one guy stood there like at the corner where he was shooting towards and he didn't move. He was just sitting there sipping his drink, watching him make the shot. And I figured the kid's gonna buckle under that, but he ended up making the shot. He just, he wasn't focused on the shape because he was thinking about making the shot. And now he's gotta figure out how to get out, which there's still an opportunity here if he goes off on the bank, yeah, or off the rail, off the 11 or off the 13, I mean, that would work too. Gonna get safe out of this. Oh no, he's not. All right, I'll be back. Um, so the body, the way the body works, it's uh, instinctive, right? So we, we survive. So it's like, like the planet has different smells all around us, but our nose, is because we can survive, will adapt to that smell and then say that's a normal smell, but we don't smell nothing, right? Um, and then we only smell certain things, right? So and the body naturally goes into the survival mode whenever anything happens. So when you're playing pool or you're driving uh, or you're skiing. Your body's gonna tell you like, hey, watch out for this. And you're like, if you don't listen to it, it's something bad could happen, right? And if you listen to it, you stop, that whatever you do, not pull over, right? And maybe you know what? I'm not ready for the smoke, whatever it is, right? Like, you gotta listen to it. Came up dry.
playing him like I would play anybody. I said to myself earlier, it's like, either give this kid a shot, he beats you, or you just play him like you would play everyone. Like, I'm trying to find balance. My last match, too, like, it was a sports night where I was looking for a big game. I don't know how to play safety. I just find balance. Oh, I know he does. Jim's on Dry break. Oh, and I'm at four. Missed the shot, but it might have been a good thing. We'll see. I'll be back.
har en bild. First, I want to do a jump shot with that. It means to give him that shot. I was trying to play a two lane. It's on Facebook, yeah. He sports live. Doing a little reset. Showing a little bit of discipline there. Makes the shot. Gonna get rewarded with position on the seven ball also. Gonna watch out for that scratch angle depending on what kind of then he puts on this. Makes the shot. 
somewhat straight. He's got a little bit of angle to work with here, so you can play this with some topspin. Good shot, and just the pole remaining to get on the hill. Oh, no, he's going to miss it, and he's going to leave it in the corner, too. A little bit of body movement. I think he jumped up on the shot a little bit. He's a good player. Yeah, I know. He's, he's playing good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, seven. Okay, do I break? All right, I'll be back.
they're really good managers. A couple of little things. Started playing good at the four. This guy like yours on by the time he's eighteen he'll be running everybody up. Yeah, yeah. And even those guys weren't that good. They weren't as good as him when they were little. They were close, right? But he's good. All right, so uh, I survived. And now we got another matchup coming up. Are you going to do the nine ball now? Or a ten ball? Yeah, dude. We're going to do the ten ball break here now. Give me a second. I'm going to switch the camera over. All right, so Han Yu's going to be doing the nine ball break. All right, and there's like uh, 1300 in the pot, or well, close to 1300 on the pot. Um, the way it works is you got to make a ball, first of all, off the break. And if you make a ball, you don't get paid for that ball until you make an, another ball legally. Each ball is going to be worth 10% of the pot. So if it's 1300, it's 130 bucks each ball. And you can continue to shoot um, if you want to, but if you miss a shot at some point, then whatever you made up to that point, it's, it's all gone. You don't get anything. So it's kind of like risk and reward type thing. We have not seen anybody do um, close to running the table, but we have seen somebody, I think it was three balls or four balls that made off, including the break. I think that's the best we've done. But most of the guys I've gone up to, to um, yeah, we're on, we're on. Most of the guys that I've gone up and, and done this uh, 10 ball break, they're usually bar box players. So like making a ball off the break is challenging and even putting a ball is challenging. This guy, however, is Han Yu and, and he's a good player. He knows the stuff. So if he makes a ball, there's a small chance that he can maybe, you know, get the whole thing and, and walk away the first guy to win it. And he had the right to check the, the rack. The rack was a little loose. So he asked for it to be re-racked, tightened up again. Is there still no sound or are we good? Carol said no sound earlier and I haven't checked with you guys since then. What's up, Vinny? How you doing, man? Says hello. They're all pool enthusiasts. Happy Easter, everyone. Then he says, uh, Rod, you should pick up, you should pick on people your own size. <laughs> so I got, I got a little rule that I have. Well, wait, I'll we'll wait till he does this here. Come on, make a ball, man. He's going to go make the three. Oh, so close. If he makes that three ball, like he didn't have much of a shot, but good try. Good try. All right, so give me another matchup here on this table other than me. You had no choice but to go for it because you don't have no money, right? So you have to go for it. You have to make a ball. You know what I think, though? I think it's too much power. You got to bring down the power a little bit. I think so. What happened when you guys uh, six nothing for me. I safety to my granddad it right out, man. Yeah. Battle of my life, I felt like. The first the first three racks, I was sweating. My heartbeat was going like this because I was just like, oh, my God, I can't get this kid a shot. <laughs> so you go on. I'm waiting for an opponent still. Um, you are going to throw Brian left. Okay. Down here, that went down, and we've got. Oh, um, on you and Henry. What's Henry's last name? Dion. Dion. Okay. Got another good matchup here for you guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, he he stays to two. Yeah, and then we stay the same. Yeah. No, if he went to one. 
I, the whole time I played him, I was nervous because, like, if I make a mistake, he's on the hill, right? So, and, he, and it's not like he's a bad player. The kid can make shots, right? <laughs> and he's got no fear because he's, he's young, right? So he doesn't care. He's not feeling pressure. He's not thinking about anything. He's just making shots, man. Dangerous that way. Dangerous that way, I tell you. All right, so let, let's get this uh, challenge bracket set up. This is a B-side match. Anu versus Henry Dion. I'll put Henry on the left because he's never been a player here before. First time player at the hangar. He's racing to four. Oh, man. That sounds like a dangerous game. Anu. I'm down the far right first. Set that. All right, so the scoreboard has been set up. It says here six. Oh, six. Wait, I guess it would be six three. Six three, yeah. Six three. Oh, wow. Six three is even worse. It's like playing that kid all over again, but just older. <laughs> and this guy apparently has been doing pretty good, although he's on the B side now. But... Apparently, he's been shooting pretty good. I wonder if I'm banned on Facebook or something, because it's not showing me any comments. It's not showing me any names. So, yeah, people are still on there. There's no warning, so we're good. Just a quiet day on Facebook today, I guess. Banner Austin, what's happening, man? It says we have sound in Ireland, right? On, well, if you can hear me all the way over there, then somebody here can definitely hear me. Thank you for letting me know, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, so anyways, I got a theory in life when it comes to pool. And so this changed back in 2017. Um, I guess I'll go back a little bit and kind of show you the process of the mind anyway. Um, so back in 2017, um, I was playing pool and then I thought to myself, like, so what, how can I play good on like spontaneous, right? Like, how do I go into a tournament and just play good? Uh, how do I go into league one day and just play good? And then when I'm like practicing around or playing with somebody that's not as good as me, I'm just like giving chances and not trying as hard and just whatever right so i said to myself like how can you be consistent or how can you how can you win if you're not being consistent right like a big part of being a winner is to have good habits and so i said to myself i gotta change my habits um so starting 2017 i said to myself you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna start winning right no matter no matter what happens on the rack um if i'm playing a match and i'm down six nothing in a race to seven um you know my opponent's playing amazing and i'm not whatever the case i was just gonna do my best to win Right. If the table was there for me, I'd take it. If it wasn't there, I was going to be disciplined enough to play safety, um, disciplined enough to play two way shots, you know, and, and just not give up too many opportunities. And another thing, too, is that I wasn't hard on myself about whether or not I ran a table. If I ran a table, good. If I didn't run a table, that's OK. The way I looked at it is if I played the right way, I would run a table. If I didn't play the right way, then I would likely turn a table over. And then that's a chance for my opponent to win. So I, I did my best to be disciplined all the time starting 2017. And then I started training to be a pro. 2018, I finished first in my league. Uh, it was like in the top 15 for the, the highest league here. Um, you know, and everything was going good because my mentality was right. I was just playing to win. So I, I said to myself then that no matter what it is, whoever I'm playing, whatever I'm playing for, I'm just going to play the same way all the time. Try my best. My best. Absolutely my best. Focused every time. You know, making sure that I'm going through my routine properly every time. Just being more disciplined. Um, and I said to myself, it doesn't matter if I play against, you know, a kid, an adult, an old man, or an old lady. It makes no difference, man. I can play against my two-year-old kid. Well, he's not even two. He's, he's uh, 15 months 15 months old now. Um, but I can play pool against him, and I do at home, and I'm making the balls in the pocket, you know, and discipline. So when I, played, when I played back, all I was saying to myself is, okay, you know what? Just be disciplined. And whatever you do, just make sure you're not giving in to the eagle. And there was a few times where I was looking at a crazy bank and I was like, I'm going to make the bank. And I was like, nah, play smart, play safety. 
Um, then I was going to do a jump shot. I was like, no, I'll do a kick shot. Then I was going to do another jump shot. Then I played another kick safe. You know, like just little things that are important when you're trying to play good pool is to be disciplined and have, have an understanding of when you can control the table versus when you're getting yourself into trouble. And so that's the way I play my safety, right? And I try to play safety to control the table, not to give it up. Tough to come in here and win this tournament, man. Lots of good competition all the time. My very first match I had to play against on you. And he beats me all the time. I mean, we've player play like eight times and he's beat me five out of the eight. And only because I just won today. Looks like he missed the shot. I gotta find this guy's Fargo right too. Jim Wilson, how you doing? Says, Thanks for the stream. And the young man is pretty good shot. Yo, I know he is. And that's why I'm not giving him no chances, man. It looks all like innocent, you know. Oh, look at that adorable little guy playing pool. The kid's a monster, man. He's just trying to figure out how to unlock the beast. And he's going to get there, I'm telling you. He's like, I don't know how old he is. He's got to be like 9 or 10. I don't think he's much older than that. And the kid already has like amazing potting skills and... Like I said, the no fear thing. But what impresses me the most is that, like, he's got balance in his game already. He knows, like, okay, well, I don't really have a good shot here. It's a little risky. I'm going to play a safety. And he did that against me a couple of times. He was trying to play smart and play safe, right? And for, for a young kid to have that kind of mentality already, he's going to be a great competitor. Because, I mean, I didn't start thinking about that kind of stuff until, like, I don't know, 10 years ago. Half of my pool career, man, I never even thought about playing safety. Then the other half, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should play safe here and there. <laughs> you, you learn eventually. The more you lose, you eventually learn. Okay, you know what? I have to have some discipline. The, the key to be good, though, to be able to compete good on the table is to just think of everyone as the toughest opponent. Because when you play against your toughest opponent, if you're playing against a house pro or something like that, almost like every single time you're playing your absolute best, you might end up, you know, missing a shot at the end out of like, uh, you know, being anxious because you might you're close to being them or whatever the case. Um, hang on, I got to figure out what the score is. That's first game. First game. So how you won the first game? I forgot where I was going. What's up, Richard Frazell? Welcome to the stream, man. Stephen Valley, welcome to the stream. Daniel Anderson says you're on. Hi, Rod. Thanks, man. Good to see you tuning in. Dan, nice to see you come out, though. One of those weeks comes up, especially with the nice weather. I guess it's almost fishing season, too, so a lot of people are going to be, like, gone, man. No pool. Have a good night, man. We'll see you. Yeah, but anyways, have the discipline to play everyone the same way. It doesn't matter who it is you're playing against. Just play them the same way. Because in the end, you're not really playing the person. You're playing the table. And how you play at the table is the results that you get when you win or lose. Not how your opponent played or how good you played versus your opponent. Is that then you get into the wrong mentality? I'm going to do this what I'm saying right now. Just a couple things we'll see there. Okay. You want to send me a message? Can you send me that as a message or you want me just to read it off your computer? Yeah. Because we got a couple of minutes. Yeah. I should say break and run. So yeah, because... I'm going to take DNR just yeah. to... Maybe put it in brackets or something. Because for the person that doesn't know what a BNR is, they're going to come yeah, ask yeah, you, I'm right? Yeah, I'm going to type that. That's why I was right there. Yeah, I just brought it to you. I forgot to finish typing it. So, yeah. 
Oh, this is like a write up. Yeah, I'm writing this all out. Okay, I got you. I'm writing this all out to do something to be able to talk to somebody else who has somebody else who doesn't understand is going to be doing some programming for me. Yeah. He needs to understand everything in order to do the programming that I'm going to be talking to him about. Which part of the QR code? The QR code entry. Yeah. That'll be a thing, but then he reads this part here, this next part here as well, that it all makes sense. And then this is what we go in and see. That's uh, my little thing of the video. That, that number four is going to be tough to keep up with all the time. Short blurb, but all I did was when, when you put in these four things each week, yeah. all I have to do is what I'm trying to do is I'm creating a thing where I have an entry thing, where when it's 10 ball break and run, you have to enter these four things each week. How many entrants? What it was? That's all you have to oh, okay. do. Okay. And then your blurb is this week. The blurb is so close, almost made the three in the side. That's all the blurb is this week. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I got so you. That, you know what I mean? So that we have something to pull with it when that video goes out. And then that video goes out. All of it gets posted right away. I don't want anybody to have to do the posting. Yeah. I want us to put that in. And then when we put that into our thing, it automatically goes out. And gets oh, posted yeah. Like okay. That. That's how I want that to go every week. And it just. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I, I, th I literally thought you could do like write ups. I was like, I tried doing that. And then, you know, like it's just like at first, like, yeah, I do write ups. And you're like, I don't want to do a write up no more. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I made it very simple. So all you have to do is just make something so that when the video goes up, there's something to write. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it makes sense. Some blurb. Yeah. Cool. It's very simple. And then we'll keep that just going as a separate thing so it keeps going. And it's cool. It'll always be advertised here. Yeah. So you can always point it out, talk about it. You have all the rules written up about it. Okay. Cool. What's up, Norman Hill? Welcome to the stream. I gotta fix this uh, lighting on the table right now. Gotta do that right now. All right, that's better. And now I gotta get I have to get their Fargo rates. I know how you is a six nineteen, but I don't know what Henry Dion is. So let's figure him out. Four thirty nine cargo rate.
Alright, there's our Fargo rates right now. And you at the table. Almost got this figured out. Looks like he was trying to set up for a bank side on the fine ball. Hands are all shooting right now. I'm just trying to be patient. Missed the bank. We'll turn the table over to Henry, and he'll get a chance to get going on this one. Gonna miss the shot to the corner. Gonna get lucky on the lead, though, it looks like. You might have looked at something on the two. Checking this to see if it's running properly, if it's lagging at all. Be running okay. Ted Bujo walked to the string. Got the eight below, made the five ball. He's got perfect shape for the eight. That's two for Hanyu. The battle is on like King Kong. There'll be some adjustments made to this one. Wonder what that second angle will look like for a break, so we're gonna check it out here. Not very good when the player is standing in front of the camera. Scratch the cue ball. Trying to figure out different things, you know? You know me. I was doing different things. All right, so ball in hand for you. We're playing b &A rules, so it's behind the line. Uh, when you're looking at this table, like, low ball is pretty open. There's only one break ball you got to worry about, which is the four. But the stripes aren't that bad, so he's got an option here for either or. Um, the only thing I don't like about the stripes would be the 14 ball where it's at. So for that reason, I'd probably go with high ball. But he can play a positional shot to get onto that 14, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and the 15 ball being where it is makes it easier to break out that 13 ball. So it's not that big of a problem if you decide to go with stripes. And so that's what he's going to try to do. I'll fix this one here. It's a little better, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six twenty one. I haven't ate anything yet, so I'm gonna go to some food right away. 
I know I just started commentating. Um, that hasn't been for long, but played a couple, played three matches so far. Now, but ain't anything yet. So, and before I play, I might as well try to get something in my system. I'm going to bring this back a little bit. Like that, that should be good. So what in cold here, Rod said, Van Rosten. And then he says, very good perspective. Yeah, I know that's the way you got to think, man. You can't, you can't just pick and choose when you're going to be a champion, right? If you're going to be a champion, you got to play good all the time, all the time. Is it on three? Pretty sure it's one, two. Oh yeah, you're right. It is three. My bad. Thank you, Robert Griffith. Just love the low and table angle table view. Yeah, it's not bad, right? It's different. I like it. Ball in hand. All right. Well, he gets a chance to work this table out. The one thing about, like, if he is truly a lower level player, four hundred and thirty nine. And technically playing against a player like on you will intimidate him and it'll make him make some mistakes but you never know play is a combo beautiful combo it was so good that the four ball followed through options for the one or the two he's going to take the one two ball's going to be a bit of a challenge he was trying to get back for it right there that's what he was trying to do as long as he doesn't give Hanyu a cut on that 13 ball, well, he's going to give him the shot. He should be able to play, make the shot to the corner and hold position for the 8 ball. Probably going to have to use two short rails to do it, though. And a bit of a drag shot with some spin. He's going to follow it through and back and forth. Okay. Risk of running into the 3 ball that way, but... Oh, he made it sure not to hit that 3 ball, but unfortunately for him, he missed the shot. And that's because he was making sure that he... Got through and passed the three ball. Oh, a huge bank. Shots fired. Uh oh, watch that pace. Oh, he's all right. Gonna get a nice angle here on it, too. He's saying he just moved the ball a little bit, not that much. That made the shot a little bit easier, actually. Helps him more for the eight ball. Makes the eight ball. Needs two more to win. Hanyu needs three. Well, that's not bad for him. A little bit of momentum. All right, I'm going to go do my thing. Take a quick breather. I'll be right back. And when I come back, I'll, uh, I'll continue the coverage. Thanks for tuning in, guys.
Five to one. Gotta do what you gotta do, says on you. Discipline, I'm telling you. Big, big, big part of being a good player.
it always feels good to like take crazy shots but if you make them i guess it feels even better but when you don't make them it doesn't feel good that's that's where i base my uh my religion if we'll call it that that's that's what i go by so it must be my religion I'm one on the hill and a chance to close out now. I'm gonna be shooting over the ball here. Not a lot of options either. It's got to set up for that fly ball, which is so close to the side pocket. You can get a shot on the two ball or the seven ball or three ball. That would be good. He's going to get pretty straight on this flying ball, though, so he's got the shot on the five now. I'm going forward here for the three ball. Almost missed the shot. Ball went off the strike and one in. Have to break on, but not an easy shot here. Played the combination, he made the shot. Makes the two. Makes the eight ball. He's on the hill. It's a hill hill matchup. Just got in there and just started potting balls away, man, like it was easy. An instinctive player. Those are the dangerous ones. I don't mind playing against a methodical player because a methodical player will, will overthink every now and then and make a mistake. But an instinctive player, like they might they might miss every now and then from body movement because they don't think the whole process through. But for the most part, when they're good, they're really dangerous. One of the guys that comes to mind all the time is uh, who I call Pac-Man, but Brian Mink. He was um, a player that used to play in the tournaments all the time back at the beginning when I started doing Q Sports Live here in Manitoba. And that guy, man, so instinctive, so fast. We're on a table in like 30 seconds, every table. You, you call up his match, and then, you know, you let him go play. Like 15 minutes later, he's back. He's like, okay, I won 6 nothing. <laughs> it's like 15 minutes. He went six racks in 15 minutes. And, and that's just the way he plays, and that's what I mean. It's dangerous when you have these kind of players because when they're instinctive, they're, they're just reacting to the table, right? And they're, they're very crafty. Got a shot here to the side or the corner on the seven. Doesn't have a shot on the three ball clear. Our plan in the bank. Did he call the one? He might have. Yeah, he did. Good attempt at the uh, cannon. We'll come up short though and turn the table over to Han Yu. He'll get a chance to close out now. This table is a little complicated. Ball to 15 to 14, all in a little bit of a situation. 10 balls are one that's kind of free, but even that is a challenge. 13 balls right in front of you, but you can't do much with them. Set up for the 11 ball, I guess. The 9 ball will be another option too. You can try to play the nine. No, I don't think you want to run to that seven ball, send into the pack. So I think you play for the eleven ball here. So that's what he's playing for is the eleven. What might happen here is that he might have to take the cue ball off the fourteen ball and then run it into the fifteen ball as a billiard shot, and that would work. 
have to hit that 14 ball with a little bit of extra pace and you would have the 10 ball as an escape shot. So you might be able to play the combo here the 14 directly into the 15 ball. And then you just play with a little bit of extra pace, but you try to hold position for the 10 ball. He doesn't like it, or maybe it's not available yet. Trying to create that angle here now. He's got good pace on this. A little bit of a touch shot coming up here. He's got to make the combo and get that 14 to hold shape on the left side of the 12. Otherwise, he's going to have to break that out. And then, you know, there's a chance that maybe the 12 might tuck into it and not give him a shot. A little bit of precision required here on this combo. Uh, he decided to go with a little bit extra pace. It looks like the 12 ball is still available. Has a shot on the 14 to select for the 12. Commander hit it. Oh, it's going to go in though. A little bit of dramatics in that one. Might have to run through a 10 ball now. I don't think you can hold position. If he tries to hold position, he'll be really, really close to that 10 ball. And if he gets into a cut angle when he's close to that ball, it's going to be very difficult to make. So option number two is just to run into it. Kind of hope for the best, but with a little bit of guidance, he's going to draw below it. Better, cho better choice, better option. Now he's got a nice little angle here to be able to stun over for the eight ball. So it actually worked out really nice. Yeah, he's taking a look at the angle now. Jazz gets over the seven ball for the eight ball. Get a nice shot set up here. Shot on the eight is good, and Hanyu's going to win the match. Six to two, Hill Hill. <clears throat> that was a nice little battle. All right, so now we need another matchup. Six two, the final score. Hanyu winning that match. Is he playing against a little guy? Is it them? Oh yeah. Seven one. Uh, I was just kidding. I'm, I'm bugging him because he asked me earlier. He's like, is it 7 1? I was like, no, it's 7 2. That's why I said 7 1. <laughs> 7 2. 7 2. No, no, 7 2. No, he's he's just a 7, right? So on the B side, he would be a 6. But because he's a 2, we can't make him any lower. So he just stays 7. Then he would have to go to 8. Yeah. We, we don't really see that too often, but, you know, it's possible. Yeah. All right, so Han Yu is playing against Beck Rogerson, and we're going to put, uh, oh, first let's get rid of this. Bring that down. That's Beck at the table right now. We'll keep him on the left. <clears throat> I think he was at 292. He goes to two. And you go to seven on this one because we can't make a two a one, so they just keep a two a two, and then the other player just stays whatever they were on the A side. Hmm. So there it is, seven to two race. We'll see how Beck deals with Hanyu. Yu. Two nine two. All right, so 292 versus a 619, and this is a real battle here. It's a battle between two players, but it's also a battle between a player and his own mindset, because I was just in that battle, so I know what it's like. <clears throat> you tighten up on every shot out here because you're not, you're not comfortable. You know, you, you know you're aware that if you do end up giving the table up and your opponent ends up winning the first game, that they're on the hill and you got to win seven straight. That's not a good scenario to be in. <clears throat> so your heartbeat starts going a little bit faster you know you, you start thinking double thinking about shots at least that's what i was going through anyway good balance is just to you know be disciplined right? 
Don't take big chances, you know, if you don't have to. Oh, man, that cue ball just hung in the pocket. That ball goes down. This kid gets a ball in hand. He might get out. Doesn't really have the two ball. Can't shoot the three. Oh, wait, he stripes. Never mind. I'm looking at the wrong, wrong suit. Well, he made the shot to the corner, but he doesn't have much to shoot at here on the 12 ball. There's no other ball you can shoot at. The 13 ball is hooked behind the 6 ball. Can't see much of that 9 ball unless we kick it off the left side cushion. Possibility of a shot going to the side pocket here. Combination, I think. I don't know what he's calling. One of the 2 balls going to the side pocket. I'm thinking he's going to play the 12 ball off the 2 ball. Beauty shot. Very, very nice shot. Can't really see the 11, can see the 13 ball, but there's no pocket. You can see some of the 10, but not enough to make it, so he's got to uh, jump the shot instead. Nice little shot here. Off the two ball. And he made a good jump, but he missed the shot. You guys missed the jump shot that he just took, but he was successful in getting the ball over the object ball and hitting his ball first. Just didn't make the shot. Two balls going to go into the six ball. Or sorry, three balls going to go into the six ball. <clears throat> Obviously, it's right. I'm calling the two ball. Where am I at right now? Gonna have to change things up here, but he's trying to break out that 13 ball. I don't know if he's got enough angle to get past that five ball. I don't think he could stroke past that five ball either. Yeah, he wasn't really able to, so it looks like he's just trying to go off the rail and in unless he can get directly onto it. And if he doesn't have it, then he's, he's in tough here. That nine ball doesn't do anything for him to get onto that 13 ball. I might have to go watch the shot. I'll be back.
All right, I'm back. All right, so Hanyu will strike first. That was a good opportunity there for the kid to maybe strike first there and put a lot of pressure onto Hanyu, but he'll survive the first rack. All right, so he won the first game, and he's breaking next. Trying to get up two games. Get some matches going in the back there. Tables are empty. There's people playing around, but they're playing on the big tables on the left. Hanger, Billiards, and Sports Lounge is where we're at. Excuse me. We're located at 121 Scurfield Boulevard. You guys can see the atmosphere is a nice setting here. Beautiful diamond tables, freshly cloth, so they're running nice and smooth. If you want to come out and check it out, maybe you want to book a spot just to make sure in case if it's a busy night, give them a call at 204 500 2929. Smash and break, and Hanyu makes a ball off the break. A little bit of work here with the solids, but the five ball is so close to the four that you can open it up, no problem. I believe that once you make the six ball, you'll have the shot on the seven ball, so you don't even have to break that out. That's what I would do here is try to set up for the seven ball and then follow through for the five ball, break that out. And then if you get into any trouble with the seven ball, then you still have the one ball to shoot at. Or the two if the two ball comes down further. I'm shooting over the ball, so that's gonna maybe help him. So watch out not to go around this four ball. Not bad. He's got a shot to the corner with the one. The two ball doesn't have a pocket right now, but he can maybe create something here with the one ball or with the four ball afterwards. You can try to get just above. There's a small window between that 13 and 9 ball to be able to make the 2 ball in the bottom left corner. A very small window. And you would have to likely have to draw into that 8 ball to have something to shoot on the 8 ball after that. I'm going to hit that window. He's going to go over a little bit further, trying to set up for the bottom right corner instead. And I don't know if he's got it, but. You can definitely jump over the shot. You can maybe cut it to the side pocket. Side pocket's a big tough shot, though. So you might just go with a jump. And he is getting a jump here, so he's gonna go with a jump. A little bit of distance on this one. Makes the shot to the side, he's gonna scratch. It was a tougher shot, but I didn't think he was gonna scratch, and I don't think he thought he was gonna scratch either. Ball in hand for Beck Rogerson. Needs to work things out here. Bit of a tough table still. Playing against a tough opponent, and he knows it. He played a balanced game against me earlier. Let's see if he plays a balanced game against on you. Lots of different options here, though. Looks like he's got the shot on the nine ball. Clear. 
I want some angle on one of the two balls. Oh, he's going to pop up and miss the shot. And he's going to give Hun Yu the eight ball to the side pocket. Huge break here for Hun Yu. Just got up on the shot a little bit. You have to stay down more. That's something that all new players kind of go through. Hun Yu will make sure to make that eight ball. Takes the second game. Gonna be back Rogerson's turn to break. See the difference between a kid playing pool and things going like that and an outgoing like playing pool and things going like that. But the kid is not like angry. He's just like a little disappointed that things didn't work out. And I don't he'd be mad he like smash my cue, throw the balls across the table. <laughs> throw your opponent across the table. The kid, no, like when you're young, you don't like you're not thinking about all that stuff. You're just playing pool, man. You're trying to learn the best you can. You're trying to compete as best as you can, and hopefully, we get a couple of good roles for you, and maybe you get a chance to win here and there. But this is good. I'm telling you, man. This kid, young, he's gonna have a chance to to be a really good player in his uh, future years, especially because you can see that he's got the desire to play. He wants to play. He wants to compete. People like that usually end up being hard workers and they become dominant players. What's up, Bandy? Says, hi, Rod. Love that. Love that table high camera. Good show. Cheers. Thanks, Andy. You know me, man. I'm always trying to change things up a little bit. David versus Goliath says, Vinny, go back, go. I don't know if he's got the angle to open up this eight ball now, but that's a good try there if he could have made it. And I don't know if he was trying to break it out, if he was trying to play shape for the five, because he had a good angle on the five ball, and, and he had a good angle to be able to break out the eight ball from there. So a little bit of body movement from Han Yu, and he's going to miss the shot. And that's because, you know, you're feeling a little pressure, like I said. You know, you know that this kid can play. We've seen him come on and play in the tournaments a couple of times already, so we know he can play. Give him an open table and he's going to run you out. Take a big chance with a few balls left on the table and he'll, he'll finish those few balls and beat you too. But then you don't know if you want to be mad at the kid or you want to be mad at yourself because you know like he was going to brace the two and really the kid's just the kid. He's just trying to win. <laughs> he went a little bit of discipline for me, discipline for me though, earlier when he was playing me. Started taking his time, trying to work things out. He's showing some discipline here. That was a good shot. I think I missed it. Probably missed it. Not a good shot. I don't want to keep all the scratch, though. Maybe a ball in hand for Hanyu. Oh, I got it. Nice little shot there. Nice and smooth. A little bit of body movement still. Just needs to learn how to stay down in the shots more. That will come with time. Lots of body movement though when there's like difficult shots or um, you know, you're feeling a little bit of pressure. Natural.
Eight to the corner is good. Three nil. Moving into rack number four, and this is the halfway point for Han Yu if he can win this game. Had a pretty good break on the last one. Looking to have a nice follow up on this one. Players like him don't need much, they just need to make a ball. Mashed it, made a couple of balls off the break. A couple of different options here, high ball or low ball. And if he decides to go high ball, he's got a nice little setup here with a nine ball to get started. Eight balls in an interesting spot, not a problem, it's not a threat. If you take high ball, you're looking at the 10 and the 15 as your problems. So if you take low ball, um, you just got to play good position, that's all, I guess. Seven ball open up the four ball, and then the, it's going to be tough to get back to the six perfectly and to have the shot on the one perfect to set up for the six or vice versa. I actually like taking high ball here. I think you just make the nine and set up an angle on the 13 ball and draw into that 15 and, and 10. Change the table a little bit, right? You have the shot on the 11 ball as an escape shot. That's the way I look at it. Gonna go for the one ball instead, and he's gonna miss it. It's gonna get a choice here, solids or stripes. I don't think that was the right shot, but there's no other choice there. When you're with a break here on this one, got a shot on a 13 ball, combination option too. I think he just needs to set up for the 14 ball right now. He needs to move that symbol out of the way. If you have the shot to the corner here, you could draw into those three balls and open up the eight ball and the three strikes. He was able to do it. Good shot. It was the right moment. I mean, you always had that 11 ball and escape shot. Now the table's wide open. It's all about potting now and just trying to stay out of trouble. And the whole time he's got that 11 ball riding as an escape shot. So very good use of the 11 ball being where it is. Eleven might come in handy to keep it there still, but he's gonna take it out right now. Well, that worked out okay. Good pace, nice cue ball control. Eight to the side is good, it's four nil. It's three more. I want to take a look at the bracket, see where we're at, where they're at. So it's probably my my match next. I think I'm on the inside final. Um, Beck Rogerson, Hun Yu are playing. Guy Smith is waiting for an opponent. Oh, those guys are still playing. Okay, so I'm still waiting for an opponent too. I am on the inside final. 
win for an opponent. Either Brian Kenneshek or Blair, Blair Lawson is one of the two. That match is going to hold up one of the B side matches up. And this one here is a uh, bit based long race, though. <clears throat> I don't, I don't remember where the kid breaks from, but I think because he's smaller and he doesn't have a whole lot of power behind his arm yet, he should be breaking second ball break. Because then you're going to likely make a ball off the break at least, and then it's going to be a little bit hard to like work out the pattern, but you'll learn how to hit it harder slowly, and you'll eventually adapt. What's up, Jeff, right? Looks like you made a ball, right? Oh, yeah, you made a ball. I gotta see where you broke from. You broke from the box, okay. Good choice. I like how he just leans into it because he's a little bit smaller, so he's gotta find some power, and he just leans into the break. Next time he gets a chance to break, I'm gonna do a instant replay so you can see it. Because technically what, what he's doing for the break is the right thing to do for the break. That's what you're supposed to do. That's how you create the snap. People's going to roll on him a little bit further than expected. Not to play smart now. Pick a spot. Can't really do anything here. Kick shot's no good either. No bank, no cut. You just got to pick a spot where you, where you want the white ball to be, where your opponent's not going to have much to shoot at. Not bad. Give him a shot on the two ball, though. But not bad. And he's also tied up the eight ball, so it's going to give him a small chance here. And you will have to put in some work here to get out on this one. Gonna miss the shot to the corner. And Beck Rogerson will come back to the table. Looking for anything towards that top left corner. Looks like he found something. Nice little pace. He's shooting a little bit too quick, though. He doesn't realize that he has a shot to the corner right now. Maybe get onto that 11 ball right away from there. Get a little spin effect there, but he's going to end up tough on this uh, 15 ball. It's a two way. He makes the shot and open up the 11 ball. Going to come up short on the bank. We'll turn the table a little on you, and he's going to have a better start on this one. Still, you know, probably feeling a little shaky from the miss on the last shot, but he'll do his best. What's up, Joe Cave? How you doing? He says, this kid has some talent. It's something we will never have again, young eyes. Yeah, ain't that the truth, man? I was just talking to somebody about that, too. I was like, well, I can only play until my eyesight goes, and after that, that's it. Then I'll just be one of those guys that's just playing for fun. Nothing wrong with those guys, don't get me wrong. There's, and there's times where those guys just pick up a game and they end up winning. Dave says, yeah, I got to throw my support behind Beck here. Awesome to see it. Yeah, it's kind of nice, right? If you guys are enjoying this, you know, give the kid a like. He's, he's going to be watching the stream later. If he sees lots of likes, he's going to think that it's because he was on the stream, which uh, I'm pretty sure it was. He has an older brother, his name is Blake, and he's a good player too. I lost to him, I don't know, I think it was like four weeks ago or something like that. I had him too, but gave him a chance, one chance too many, and he ended up capitalizing and beating me. You're going to see Beck keep coming back, and he's only going to get better. Once the kid starts winning, just watch out, he's going to get the beast mode in all the time. Uh, for now, the best you can do is just try to learn from this. And learn from the discipline of the player that you're playing against. Try to figure out the patterns that they're playing and why they're playing them. And just try to get information off of it as much as you can. 
a lot of times people go to tournaments and then they go on there and they just lose back to back and then just go home and that's the end of it they'll come back out next week and do it again um never really getting any, anything out of it except for the experience of just losing and that's it uh the want to maybe win right what you should be doing is just sitting there and watching your opponent and trying to see like if, especially if they're a really good player you know instead of sitting there being nervous about like how good they are try to learn when they're at the table like what they're doing right and what you wouldn't have done right by analyzing their, their table and saying oh well, i'll put the cue ball here make the shot there you know and, and then see if they do that if they do something different learn from it and, and the more you're learning about it then you'll see like there's different options for almost every shot some shots are pretty straightforward but with the ones that are straightforward even then there's still a few different options if you have some really good aim you know your spins anyway smash and break cue ball just misses the scratch in the side pocket looks like he's gonna come up dry it's gonna get a shot solids or stripes stripes look like a bit of a mess the solids are kind of okay but the two ball is kind of a shot you gotta address too so let's see what he does here gonna make the first shot should be taking a look at the table here on the right side to see what he's got available for the side pocket that's what he's gonna do a little bit of a breakout shot gonna miss the shot trying to break it out though was thinking about the breakout so of course the ball's going to come out in the open but missed the shot because of that bryce johnson says this is exactly how you get better that's right man that's right you got to put it out there too you got to learn you got you know pay attention don't just sit there and lose sit there and learn The more you understand about patterns, the better you're going to get. And aiming, well, that's just something you got to put time on the table for. And same thing with stroke. Because first there's aiming, then there's stroke. A little bit different. Oh, he almost missed that one. I think the 12 ball here to open up the 10 and the 15 ball if he wants, because he's got the 14 balls and escape shot. Going to play the combo instead. Another good option. Now he can make the 15 or the 10. Eight balls on the open. I believe it goes both pockets, so he doesn't have to worry about opening that up too much. And I believe that he can make the shot on the 13 ball to the side pocket if he needed to. So once he makes the 14, all he has to do is set up for the nine ball with either a triangle to make the 13 ball in that corner or a follow through angle to make it to the side. He's got a nice comfortable lead at the table right now, so he's kind of like free stroking a little bit. That can get you into trouble. And you can see here, like he kind of got into a little bit of trouble. Got the wrong angle. Might have to run to the 13 ball now. Tries to avoid it, runs into the fine ball, and gets a good angle off that fine ball. Still all right. Just has to make the shot and come across now for the eight ball. Yeah, so far. Yeah, we're going to need another match right away. It's. He's going to be on the hill right away, so do we have another match? Oh, they're, they're still playing? Okay. They got to be close to being done, I guess, right? It's been a while. No, but I mean, their match is getting close to being done. Still going, yeah. Um. Okay, whatever. 6-0. Nil. 6-0 nil on the hill. Chance to get a win here on the next few racks. The kid, well, all he's got to do is just try to find one win. He can maybe change the momentum his way, add some pressure to Han Yu. Johnny Joe, what's happening, man? Says, hey, Rod, good to see new blood. Too bad he didn't draw a compatible opponent. Yeah, because then you would have really, really seen his skill, right? You would have seen how comfortable he is. He's a good player, I'm telling you. When he was playing against me, he was playing really good, too. The only thing is that on crucial shots he was missing but um other than that like he was playing balanced game playing safety playing good potting shots right and he's a good player and he's throwing a couple more things and at this young age i'm telling you give him like two more years maybe even one more year he might change his game to the point where you're like well wow i remember this kid got a ball off the break once again so success off the break and i said i was gonna see 
where you broke from. No, I was gonna show. I forgot to save it. But we're gonna need a hill hill matchup here so we can show his break again. He has a really good step in when it goes into the break, and, and I think it's because it's a smaller size, so he needs to find power. And he's figured out how to do the snap. If he keeps that break that way, you know, going for the next few years, by the time he's 18, he's going to have a monster break, man. People will talk about his break like they used to talk about Jason Klatt's break when he was 18. 18, 19 years old, and, and Jason Klatt wasn't winning the, the U.S. Open, but they would always talk about his monstrous breaks, and then he has some vicious breaks. This kid's got that, that little bit of style to him, too. You can see the way he's leaning into the shot. He, he's going to create some massive power. They're having a discussion. I'm not sure what's going on. I got to bust a munch. I got my food here. and It's getting soggy and old, so I'm going to bust a munch real quick. I'll be right here, though, so I'm not going to be far. If you comment or anything, I'll, I'll mute the mic and talk to you guys. Seems to have a sense of the game. Oh, yeah, no, he's, he's definitely a good player, man. He's got an older brother that's pretty good, too. They kind of push each other around on the tables a little bit, so it makes them great. And their dad plays pool, too, so he's competing against them also, putting them on, on team events, you know, and stuff like that, getting the kids playing. So really good stuff to see, honestly. The future is good when you see young players playing the game the way he's playing the game right now. It's just tough for him that, first of all, he had to meet me because... I'm cold hearted at the table. I, I don't I don't really care who I'm playing against. I play my best all the time. And then to be able to have to go through and play Han Yu after, even tougher, because you know, Han Yu doesn't miss too often. Everybody that plays him has a tough time playing against him, including myself. I was lucky to beat him earlier in the first round. And the way he's playing right now, it looks like he's trying to come back and do like a double dip thing if I win the A side. And I don't know. And the other option is that I might go to the B side and see him in the B side final. By the way, he's looking for revenge, man. I need this kid to knock him out. <laughs> Come on, I'm back. Go back, go. I'm only kidding, though. I'm honestly, I'm just kidding. He's going to have a chance to get out here. He's got it all in the open. I think the April even goes past that 10 ball to the top right corner. In poker, it would be considered what they call sitting pretty. Like, everything is set up here for the win. Yeah, it looks like you're going to get out here for the win. And we have another match that's going on further down, but I'm not sure what's going on with the score. One of them's at four. I'm not sure where the other one's at. I believe it's a 6-4 race. No, 6-5 race. One's on the hill. The other one may not be, but that's my opponent, whoever wins there. So if that match finishes in time, then we'll uh, switch over here. We'll keep the matches going. And if not, then we'll put it over there on their table. I have to make some camera adjustments here. You guys I have to go through that motion with me. I got to bust a munch. I'm hungry. So while they're over there playing, I'll give me a chance to just bust a munch. Blair just made the eight ball on that table. Looks like they're still going. Oh, and Han, you missed the eight ball. Oh, wow. Huge break here for the kid. He's got to work this out.
Looks like the pool gods want to give us a hill hill matchup. We got lucky there and hooked them behind the 14. We'll see if uh, what happens here, but huge break for the kid. He knows it's over, he's just gonna concede. On you will win seven nothing. And uh well we don't have another match, so we're gonna move the camera over real quick. Okay, I mean where's my remote now? one of them oh there's the other one all right so this is a semi-final a size semi-final match that's coming up here they're they're playing right now i play the winner you guys have to go through the motion with me here as i move the camera over they're playing on that table It must be like a hill hill matchup. That's Brian kind of stuck at the table right now. Way too much. All right, so they're they're in a battle here. That's Brian kind of stuck at the table. I think he's on the hill, and. Blair's trying to either win the match right now or he's trying to get on the hill also. A nice little battle. Winner of this match plays against me next. And I'm going to bust a munch real quick, so don't, don't mind me. I'm going to excuse myself from the mic for a few minutes while I eat. Because I have a little bit of time here before I get to play. Thank you for your understanding. Oh, and if you're enjoying the coverage, don't mind liking the stream. I'd appreciate it, especially on YouTube or uh, Facebook, but YouTube the most because that's where the algorithm really matters. So if you uh, want to support my work, you can do so by liking the stream on YouTube. And if this is your first time checking out YouTube, you've never been on my YouTube channel before, you can always subscribe to the YouTube channel too. That's another way to support. Um, I promise you that most of the times when I'm not playing and I'm doing the commentary, I do a pretty good job. Um, but when I'm playing, I, I might neglect the stream here and there and it's never intentional, but it used to be like the stream was everything to me. And now I've been a little bit more disciplined. So the way I do it now is the game comes first and then the stream, right? And, but I don't know. We'll see how it works out. But somebody was saying earlier, like, it's impressive the way you play and, and stream and do all the stuff. And I was like, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time, man. I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Multitasking. Uh, pretty important skill to have. Anyways, I'm going to bust a bunch.
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Blair is at four. He goes to six, so it could this could be a hill hill matchup right now, but I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that Blair's at four. If he ends up winning this game and they shake hands, I'll know that he was at five. So it's a genuine and honest uh, guess. Not really a mistake, just so you guys know. For the record. But when you guys say, Oh, why is the match over? It's because I didn't know what the score was. And I didn't want to interrupt them. But it's uh three, four, 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 or five, four right now. Brian Kenneth checks on the hill. He's the one that's shooting at the table right now.
I gotta go back and see where Blair moved this coin to. He's on five now. See, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I know my players. I gave him a four because I was like, you know what? I just got a feeling that Blair's at four. Bingo. Five four. That's the score. It's a hill hill matchup. Winner of this plays against me. I better bust a bunch quickly.
<clears throat> I was going for the 14. Yeah. Too much pace. Gonna run into the 15 ball, no shot. Maybe cut it to the corner. That's only if it passes the four ball, too. And he says the kid is good. He needs to flatten his bridge hand a lot. Yeah. Oh, learning curves, right? Kid's got a future in the game for sure, though. Not a lot he can do here. I don't think he can make the cut to the corner. Can't play it out the four because it won't go anywhere. Playing it out the one won't do anything for him. The only kick shot possibility is either straight to the side for just a good hit or off the bottom rail for a long rail kick shot, <clears throat> which at that point you're going to leave a wide open table, so you don't really want to do that. <clears throat> Are playing a safety. I'm not sure if he was successful with it or not. It looks like he's tucked him up against that four ball or against the eight ball. Yeah. Our customers walking through. Looks like Blair played a safety here on Brian Kanischuk. No other option except for to kick the ball here. A lot of people walking around makes it a bit of a distraction, but we'll see if he can get a strike. Gets a good hit, needs a little bit of luck here, and it looks like the one ball is going to rest over the pocket, giving Blair Lawson a wide open table for the finish. And if that's the case, then Blair Lawson and I will have a A side final showdown, possibly right after this.
Let's see his offense will leave the one ball as a finish ball. Oh, he's playing safety here. Showing some discipline at the table. Smart shot, though. He gives himself a high percentage to win the match now. I don't think he's given Brian anything on the stripe. Kick shots, pretty impossible from the right side of the table. Getting around that four and eight ball. Um, but it's not impossible from the left side of the table where he's just walking around from. That could be the shot. If you can get a good kick shot to hit the stripe, to roll it into the one ball, you're set. Then the eight ball will be your blocker on the four. Your opponent would have a jump shot, which he has a lot of experience in jump shots. But if he makes a great jump shot and you lose Hill Hill in a great jump shot, there's no shame in that. You did your absolute best at that point. He's looking for the spot. The light bulb went off and he's like, wait a minute. I'm going to go for the kick shot. Two away shot. As long as that, that, I don't know what it is, a 12 ball, a 10 ball, one of those two. Runs into the one ball and drops the one ball. And the cue ball stays in line with the eight ball. He's good. Blair has a lot of experience. So if you give him an opportunity, he's going to finish. Well, he got a good hit out of it anyway, but he's going to turn the table over to a wide open table. And Blair should win the match here. That little bit of discipline there, making the choice to play the safety, paid off. And he's going to do that kind of stuff against me too. So this battle, him and I, if, if he ends up winning, which it looks like he will win it, um, should be a good battle. A lot of experience and a lot of skill at the table. Two balls remaining. Gonna just get over for the eight ball. Shot on the eight is good. That's gonna be the match. He's relieved to to know that he got out. That was a good battle. Six to four. Shout out to the commentator for guessing the score at the beginning with 4-4. Yeah, that was me. Tap on the back right now. Good job, man. <laughs> I'm like a pool detective. You give me a scenario in a pool, in any kind of scenario on the table, and I'll figure out, like, who's shooting what, whatever. But every now and then, you guys have heard it, like, earlier, you know, calling the wrong, t the wrong shot. It happens. But I'm a pretty good detective. All right, so we're going to have a showdown, I guess. It's going to be Blair and myself, A-side final. I'll bring this camera back to its original spot. I'll make some adjustments on the camera itself. That's the kid still playing. We'll make it official here for Blair. Seven to four, the final score. That was a nice little matchup. We've, we've had some pretty good matches today. Um, boop, 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 boop. Yes, Blair and I. It'll be a straight race to six. All right, and um, right, so this is exactly how you get better. Oh, that was earlier. Yeah, and you were right, man. 
Uh, Fargo. Blair yeah. Lawson. It's going to be an intense battle here for me. 574 for Blair. We're pretty close. He's a 574. I'm a 588. So this should be a good matchup. <clears throat> I know he's got a lot of experience. Hopefully my game can hold up. Just waiting for them to make it official. What's up, Blair? Do you and I, A side final? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, we will do it. Let the pain begin for both of us. We'll see who does better here, but it'll be a battle. And he's been playing, just came off a good match. I haven't played in a little while now, but I'm not worried about it. I'm gonna try to do what I've been doing so far and just stay focused. Race to six, even race, A side final. Wish me luck. As a or is one of those two tables, they're both in the background. They're both in the
So this is turn. Who's that that says good luck to me? Kathy Seacrest. Thank you, Kathy. Appreciate it. Bit of a puzzle there. I have to change my pattern. There was something that I wanted to do and then it didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out. So I had to change my pattern a little bit there, but I made a good choice. Let's see. Oh, much better now. I'm sure, I guess he's going to go get his breaker. Oh, he's getting some truck. I make a ball into the corner. Decent break. A little bit of work. The eight ball's in a tough spot, but four ball can open up the eight ball. I think he's gonna go low ball here, but he could start off with that ball ball. But if he does take the stripes, he's got a big breakout to worry about, which is the fourteen. But likely he's gonna want to take low ball here. We'll have two options to get that eight ball open. And then the six ball doesn't necessarily have to be broken out. He just can play shape for it. I start off with a run out, so he's going to want to reply and do the same here. Thank you, Robert Griffith. Cardinal retracted their message. Robert says, right, I always thought the rack was equal on all sides, but I see so many people turning around like you did. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, like it, it's not something that you have to do, but like the diamond racks have a special diamond on the rack. So that rack, that diamond is supposed to be in the front part. And <clears throat> technically what it's supposed to do is supposed to like hold the cue ball or the object ball better at the front. But you do flip it around, or sometimes you flip it upside down, which what you do with the plastic racks too. What it's all about really is just trying to get a good a good setup on the brake where it's where the rack is sitting good. I'll be right back.
Got a little too quick on that one. That was supposed to be my little break there where I, I get a couple of games ahead, but no, it's going to be a tie game. I'm not concerned still, you know, and, and I never will be no matter what the score is, but it's always important to try to capitalize when you get an opportunity from your opponent, especially when your opponent's not one that misses off, uh, shots too often. And he's probably thinking the same thing right now, too. Oh, and he's going to miss that shot. I didn't expect that. And I think the 13 ball still goes. All right, so I got a bit of a chance here. I got to figure it out. I planned out the breakout to push the eight ball out of the way and to have my ball opened up to the side pocket, but it ended up not working out the way that I wanted to. And I'm a little bit lucky there that I ended up sending that eight ball towards that 15 ball. And I say just a little bit because the reality is like he's going to have a breakout option for that ball anyway, and it's not really a good shot. And not only that, but he's a banker too. So like if he worst comes to worst, he can just set up for a bank. That's what he's looking at now to see why he can get the finish here. It's going to have to be a bank, and likely it's going to have to be a bank side. Maybe the bank corner, the bottom right corner. Thanks, Johnny Joe. I'm seeing the ball okay today. I'm just got to stay focused and make sure that I'm making good choices at the table. So he's got one stab at breaking it out here or setting up for a bank corner. He almost has the angle to be able to draw all the way down for the side so he can get a bank side. But got to stroke that a little bit more, and now you have the chance or the risk of the cue ball running too far. But I think the bank corner is what he's going to want to set up for him. And set up a natural angle. It goes past the 15 ball too. Got to set up for the bank side. He's got a shot of it. Definitely a shot available for that one. 
For me, the good thing is if he doesn't make it, I'll have a 15 ball out of the way, too. Oh, hopefully he doesn't make it. No, he's going to make it. That's going to be a loss from the scratch. And I broke first, so I'm breaking next. That was an interesting break at all. Like it opened up, so they all moved, but they kind of clustered up everywhere. But the stripes are actually pretty decent. They're not that bad. He's got a good chance at this table. Bryce Johnson says, let's go, Ron. You got this. Appreciate that. Uh, make sure that I just uh, stay composed at the table as much as possible. Got a pretty good table though. All kind of close range work in the middle of the table, but it's not too bad. And then the only problem ball he's got is that 12 ball, which you can probably open up or get position on. I'm gonna move things around here a little bit, maybe. I don't know, I should be able to draw back here. 18. Options now. If I was him, I'd be taking the 15 to the corner and then setting up for the 12 ball after that and then the 9. Or the sort of the 13. I want to end up tied up here. He's got a shot to the corner still. Might want to actually take that 12 ball here. But it all depends if he can play cue ball position back and around to the left side of the table for the 9 ball to make it in the bottom left corner. Then he doesn't have to worry about that 12 ball. Gonna miss the shot trying to get there though. And he didn't really give me a lot, but he gave me a 5 ball, so I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to get this table opened up a bit. A little bit of work there, especially the, the primary colors there yellow, blue, and red all hanging out.
I figured everything out, but I didn't see the white ball scratching. That was not part of the plan. I was trying to get the cue ball to come down and go back up, so I had another shot after, right? That, that goal there was to push the one ball open, um, then had the three ball come down, so I went to the bottom right corner, which is ex exactly what I did there. So I had a good plan, just didn't work out. And then I had the first shot, but I had to switch hands, and it didn't work out. It, was, it wasn't a good angle, so then I decided to just play it through and then try to go up and down again, and then I ended up with the same position that I had prior to that. So the only thing it was a little bit more comfortable on the queuing, but I, I made a bad judgment there. Going to snug up against the three. I don't know if he's got a shot on the nine. Might have to play a safety here. If he can make it, then he can make and try to go around the table. But because the eight ball is where it is, I feel like it's a little bit harder to travel around the table to come back down. And then you have to get perfect on that nine ball. Very challenging shot. But I think maybe you can play like a two-way shot. Just play the bank with a draw. Try to get the cue ball right back to where, where the three ball is right now. Got a lot of experience on the safety stuff. Snooker player, English village player. Knows a lot about nine ball and eight ball and ten ball. He's got a lot of knowledge too, so he's not just gonna take this and do some random stuff. He's gonna try to find a good spot where we won't have much to shoot at or a difficult choice. Trying to get me on top of the eight ball, maybe? No, he's gonna give me a small chance. Only hand. All right, lucky break for this guy. I broke first, so I break all the even racks, all the odd racks. Or sorry, I break all the odd racks, all the even racks go to Blair Lawson. So he's breaking next year in rack number four. Sound like me the ball. I made a solid. And he's kind of in a weird situation here. Like, you almost want to take solids because you don't really have much of a choice. But then the two and the three are kind of, they're still available for a combo. But if not, you're going to have to break it out. So that's where your biggest problem comes. Okay. I'm going to call the seven ball. He's going for the solids. And now he needs to make sure that this one ball clears away from the ten ball to make sure that he has something to shoot at next.
Oh, he played the combo using the stripe instead. Okay, that's a different choice. He's got the four ball now with an angle to be able to break into that three and two, but he can also play the shot from here now because he's got perfect angle for the combo. He's looking at the combo. Makes sense to go for it here. Good shot. Doesn't want that to tie up in any way. If it goes past the four, he's still okay. One ball being where it is, kind of a dangerous thing, but the eight ball is right by it, so you can use it as your finish ball. If he's got the three ball, he's going to push that six ball up a little bit, so he's got to be careful how he hits his shot. Be sure to follow through. He's got a back cut now on the six ball with an angle to get into the 13 ball. He can leave that there actually and try to draw around and get back onto the one ball here and then finish off with the four. But where the one ball is, it's probably best to have that as a finish ball. And now it's all about the shape. Putting that 13 ball there is going to kind of interfere a little bit with the draw angle if you can force it over. You might have to actually settle for a bank corner shot on the one ball to the top left corner. Or just use a lot of juice and hopefully you find that small window. Trying to get on it. Not much you can do here. Maybe a bank corner. A kick shot is another option. I'm gonna call it. Looking for a two rail kick shot. Long rail, short rail with a back cut into the one ball. He makes it, he should be able to get a shot on the eight ball. Good hit, but he didn't make it. It'll be my turn to shoot.
The ball's to bank that 10 ball to block the one ball. Left on the whole one ball. A uh, nice little bounce there on the eight ball. Nothing I can do about it there. I just got to let it go. 3-1. I'll be back. Felt my shoulder to get into the shot. I wasn't quite ready. Like I knew what I wanted to do, but I wasn't 100%, and that's going to cost me another rack now. It's all right. When it happens, it happens. You got to be careful, though, because, you know, when you turn the momentum over to your opponent, sometimes they get double momentum, and then they get to take a lead on you. So I got to be careful here not to give up too many opportunities. And if I get another chance somehow on this table and any other table, I got to try to do my best to. Just keep control of the table. There, I wasn't ready for the two ball. I don't know why. Like, And I got up right the first time because I was like, no, I'm not ready. Then the second time I went down, I was like, well, now I'm ready. But I, I was still standing in the same spot. Just little little things that you got to pay attention to. Huh? Just try to learn, like I say. I'm trying to learn myself here. Even if I was to get another shot on this table, I got a lot of work to do. So and the odds are kind of against me. The first shot was the one that mattered after that. And like the odds are all against me. And maybe that's what I was thinking in the back of my mind when I shot that ball, because I wasn't quite ready. I haven't been thinking about like the win loss. And then I guess once I got that third game, I was thinking, oh, I'm halfway there. And then I kind of changed my mindset a little bit. So it changed the way I was playing at the table. And I recognize it right away, so I'm going to go back to just, you know, being relaxed and just playing my best game that I can and let the results just work out as I'm playing the game instead of getting myself into a mentality situation. A couple of options here, break out the seven or break out the six. You can almost do both. And not right away, but I can set up for one to break out the other after. If he gets a good angle on that eight ball on the draw, he might even build the whole position for the six ball. He's starting to think now, see? That's why I didn't want to let him on the scoreboard, because then he starts playing. <laughs> I know, Miller. He, he plays dead all the time at the beginning, but then as soon as you think that he's dead, boom, he comes back and he starts shooting. I know better.
decent. Had better angle before, but here he can follow through anyways and open up that six ball. Or draw for the seven. Close. Some of them are off, but most of them are pretty good. Like for the 600s and up, they're all good. The 550s and up are pretty much good, but lower, it's a little bit off. Uh, like if you do Fargo Fair match, it'll be just slightly off. It works pretty good, man. Yeah. It gives everybody a fair chance. Oh, yeah. 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 You can do that there. It allows you to do it. Yeah. Then you got to start him with a 525. Uh, but just, since you're going to call him, just ask him, right? Mine, usually I put 525 and I'll say 200 or a starter rate until 200 robustness. I'll put in brackets. Yeah, I got the guy going now. Oh, and he missed the shot. No way. Oh, and he didn't leave me much either. I'm in trouble here. I was playing the safety behind those two stripes, but I almost gave him the shot. The 12 ball came out and saved my ass. Should still be able to hit this, but I got a better position now. As long as it gives me something to shoot at. And he will, but not much. I'll be back. Falls the corner on the six ball. I gave him enough to be able to hit it. Oh, and he just missed it. Oh, lucky me. I'll be back.
figure that one out. Okay. 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 It's it's a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. Careful. Oh, no. Yeah, you did. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. I'll just leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Sorry, you switched my uh, camera here, and I got to wait for it to turn on again. Okay, so that's turned on, but the thing is way off. Yeah, I'll do a little bit of camera adjustments here. Hang on. I don't know if I set up properly, but oh, close enough, I guess. All right, I gotta go shoot.
I was happy with my effort there. I didn't really have anything, and I played a, what's called a, a cannon or whatever English billiard shot. And uh, it's you have to see the perfect line to be able to get it. I almost had it. I just hit it a little bit too heavy, a little bit lighter with more of a, um, like a stun stroke. Then it would have gone in. So that, that was a really good effort. I was feeling good about it. And see, that's the important thing, too, when you're playing is that as long as you're feeling good about the way you're playing, it doesn't matter what the results are. Of course, you always want to win, but it really doesn't matter. It just comes down to um, feeling good about your performance. I'm in trouble here on this rack. I need to get into some trouble because otherwise I'm going to be in trouble. I don't really have anything on that fly ball. Oh, he came up short. Didn't give me anything on the fly ball, though. So that kind of worked out. I got to figure out something here. I'll be back. There's two different thoughts that I had there is either try to tap that 10 ball or I was going to play the combination, the 10 to the 11, try to make both of them, give them a ball in hand for the 13 ball. And only because the 5 ball was close to the 8 ball, but I felt like with the ball in hand, he'll easily get the shape for the finish there. So it's kind of like a waste of an opportunity. And then what I tried doing was just missing the 5 ball a little bit to get the 10 ball to bounce off the rail and back into the 5. The idea was it's supposed to tuck into it so that way there wouldn't be any shots for him, right? And, yeah, he would get a ball in hand, he would try to break it out, and then maybe that five and the eight ball would both fight for me. So I was just trying to create like a small chance out of nothing, but he's going to have a good chance here on this table, especially with the ball in hand, and I didn't really create much of a mess for him. He's thinking about breaking it out too. Now the combination is a good idea. So the reason why I put that ball there is because I was thinking if you put the combo and then like you might put the eight ball over the pocket and then maybe you won't have a shot on the 10 ball after that. So that, that's the way I set it up. That's the reason why I decided to bank that up because I said worst to worst, I have plan B if I don't tuck into that five. And so it, this is where he's at now. He almost needs to break the cell just to be able to get out. That gives me a chance now. Okay, and now he has to break it out. He can play safety if he wants to try to tuck me up into the eight ball, and then that's usually what people will do. But he's gonna try to break it out. Oh, 
and he got a little bit unlucky there. I think the April rolled up on top of the cue ball to take away the shot on the 10, but you can see some of it. So he can play safe here. In the, or a kick shot. He can play the kick shot for the win with a blocker if it doesn't go in. I need a little bit of luck here on the leave. When he hits the 10 ball, and he's going to give me the shot on the 5. It pulls a little tricky, so I might have to run into it.
So I listened to my instincts there. I was going to go bank and I decided to go with the cut because like the 11 ball was protecting me from scratching. But I ended up coming on short on the shot and now I turn the table over. Just a little bit of a, like maybe a rush decision there. I don't know. Feeling pretty good about my game though. That's for sure. I'm not playing bad. I'm playing pretty good. Just have to be careful on the, the, the important shots. Like they're like, you know, if I take the bang corner, probably better off, right? Hit it with pace, good chance I might make it even. The cut was a little bit more difficult, and I, I kind of give in to the eagle there a little bit because you're not supposed to do that. Shot from Blair. A little bit unfortunate there that he's left himself either a combination or a cut shot. Cut shot's are probably the one that I would go for, but he might go for the combo. Only because that 12 ball is so close to the rail and then it allows it for the combo to be a little bit easier to be made. Go make the combo, gets the shot on the 13 ball with an angle to get set up for the 10 ball. And he's looking good on this rack. I'll just be patient. Got to put a little Beato on this ball. What's <laughs> up, bosses of talk? How you doing? Uh, okay, I got a few comments here. Okay, let's see. Let's go back. Uh, bosses of talk. Did, is this match in Canada? Yes, it is. I wonder if he has, if he's going to go for the run out or play safe. What would you guys do? Yeah, you know, you got to have a little bit of balance, man. So sometimes I go for the run out, sometimes I go for the safe. They're like that that one I should have taken my time a little bit more because like I just took it for granted. I figured I put some right hand spin, I get over no problem, but then I hit that ball. But I should have been a little bit more uh, precise there. And hopefully that's not something that bites me in the ass in the long run because I just gave him a chance to get back in this match right now. Don't want to give anybody confidence when you're playing against them. I'm gonna do my best to shut it down in the next rack or whenever I get a next opportunity. Not an easy game though, especially when you're playing against experienced players. They they tend to play really well and very disciplined and makes it always a little bit more challenging to overcome those players. Uh I maybe would have tried to safe behind the nine for ball in hand. Yeah, so some of the stuff I haven't been looking at, I've been doing some pretty good. He's running these well though, says bosses. Yikes. Canada has some good players. Thanks, man. Clean kick on the eight, nice. Uh, boss it says it's hard to safe a guy when his last ball is in the pocket like that for sure. Yeah, so and that's that's kind of like how you have to think, right? You have to like if you're gonna give a ball in hand, try to work a situation where it's gonna be to your advantage, right? And I don't know. So far, I think I've done pretty good with that those kind of decisions today. I just should have taken my time there for that one because that was important. Hopefully, it's not a lesson that I have to learn today because I've, I've seen it before. So I don't I don't need to learn lessons today, pool gods. Just let me be. <laughs> just let me be man we're good on the lessons today big circle says robert griffith yeah i know i got to find myself back in the small circle i'm starting to get into that mentality again so it's gonna make my game a bit more competitive now oh he's gonna miss that shot it's an open table i have a real chance here i gotta focus i'll be back Real smooth pit play, says bosses, makeable for a game. Got to put a little Beato on this one. Oof, he says, all right, I caught up on YouTube. I'll be back. I was so focused on opening that four ball up and I missed the shot. Dumbass. He's going to run me out. That's okay. It happens. I, I'm letting him in. It's my own doing, so I'm not going to worry about it. That was a real good chance, though, though. You're not going to get open tables like that too often, man. He gave me a wide open table, so I don't know. Wasted opportunity for sure. 
wasted opportunity for sure and i should have just taken the seven ball first i don't know what i was thinking at least claim what you want first and then go from there you know i didn't even claim what i wanted but i'll let it go like i said no point in dwelling on something that i can't do anything about anymore oh and he's gonna miss that shot and scratch oh man the pool gods want to give me a chance here i better capitalize Uh, Rogers and the kids. I think they left already, though. Yeah. today. Yeah. You probably have, and for many more of the people, you probably have um, a name and a phone number or an email address or a text number. Or something. Can't get a hold of them somehow, yeah. yeah. Why? Because they were entered to the draw? Have that and all that? No, because I'm putting that all in and build the players. I have oh. to build a little bit with a little knowledge. I'm building all their partner rates auto. And I'm trying to input that all so that I can test the stuff out. So if I can get those 18 from you, um, of all the different stuff because i have it in different places but i thought you'd probably know better than i would no not not phone numbers most of these guys that get a hold of them through facebook messenger right so well, actually, you put facebook messenger as your, as your contact yeah you could so that is one of them that has a choice of it oh okay I think so. okay 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 uh no these are three and a half by seven guys three and a half by seven diamond tables Shot. Just gonna have to come up with another one here with a 15 ball. Has to try to get that 12 ball open. Gonna miss the shot, however. Gonna change the table a little bit, but I think the four ball maybe still goes. If not, I gotta break it out. And a tough leave here. I'll be back.
Yeah. Bit of a long match, Jefferson. All right, I won that one 6-2. A-side winner today, baby. All right, so 6-2, they took the board, so I have no idea what's going on with the board. Uh, uh, good game, says Bosses of Talk. For the win, I had it, man. Well, and the thing is, like, I gave up a couple of opportunities there, so, like, you don't want to do that, right? You usually don't want to do that, man. Um, and I recognized that I was doing it, so I said to myself, okay, I just got to slow down, get refocused, don't think about the win, just, you know, focus on the shot itself. And it worked out pretty good, so... Good, good, valuable conversation with my own self there to be able to get ahead. Let's see what other comments we got here while we're waiting for another matchup. Or maybe I'll go tell them what the score was so that way they can get another matchup going. I'll be right back. But we do have one in the background here, though, so I'll put it over here for now. These guys are playing over here and bringing back some. This is a B-side match, the only match we got remaining right now. We're getting pretty close to, I believe my cutoff for Facebook. They used to tell me at the time. Okay, so there it is. So I got two hours still. We, we might be able to get it done. And we'll see. If not the... If not the, the B-side final championship match will have to be streamed separately, but hopefully that, that won't be the case. Dab some lighting here. Bring down some of that lighting. Uh, not sure what the score is, but we'll reset here, put their names up, take down the Fargo rates. It's going to give me a chance to have a little bit of a break. I kind of need it, man. That was a bit of an intense match. Tough opponent, right? So I don't want to give him too many opportunities. I was trying to be careful. Uh, so this is Guy Smith and Brian Kaniszczuk. Guy Smith. All right, one of them's at three. The other one, I'm not sure. Is either at two or three? So uh, let's see. I'm trying to read the body language. My detective work is in, in play right now. I'm trying to see if I can figure out who is down and who is up by the way they're looking around and standing and their body language. Yeah, I'm going to say it's 3-2 for Brian. Yeah, I don't know. Wild guess. 3-2 for Brian. If I get it right, everybody's got to send me a dollar. <laughs> if, I get, if I get it right, everybody's got to send me a dollar. If I get it wrong, oh, you guys got to send everybody in a dollar. <laughs> send each other a dollar. Thank you, Bruce Jensen. I'm going to say 3-2, Brian. <clears throat> and he's going to 5 here. No, this is B-side, so he'd be going to 4. And so would Guy Smith. Should be a race to 4 here. So it could be a hill-hill matchup right now, for all I know. That's actually more than likely what's happening here is hill-hill. But by the body language, I would say that Guy Smith is down by 1. Tough opponent that Blair lost, and then I try not to take chances whenever I get a chance to play him. Talk to Kevin. Good shooting, man. I just wanted to welcome you back. <laughs> it's really nice to see you, man. Oh, yeah. They tried it here before. Really? Did you get a chance to play that Arizona eight ball? Arizona eight ball? No, it's I um Chuck. Uh, what's his last name? Archambault. Yeah, he taught me that game. They played apparently a lot out there in, in Phoenix. So. I'm gonna be uh, sort of going that way, I guess. 
in May. I want to go and visit my family in Phoenix. When is it? When is it super hot there? Just in the summer, like June, July, or is it super hot all the time? Yeah, they're nuts. I, I've been there when it's July. It's hot. Crazy, man. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I remember the last time I went there, I was a kid, and my shoes were sticking to the ground because it was so hot. He wants to cash out at third. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, man. I don't, I don't remember what the score was. You guys remember what the score was with me and Blair? See, I don't even pay attention to those things. I gotta go back there and rewind. I gotta enter it here. Six two, okay. Thought it was two, but I wasn't sure and I didn't want to ask Blair. Alright, so Blair Lawson goes to the B side, but he's calling it a day. So whoever wins the B side semi will automatically go to the final. And that could easily be Han Yu right now because he's the highest seeded player. And I'm pretty sure he's looking for some revenge because I sent him to the B side earlier on the first round. And he hasn't gone away yet. He's still here. Yeah. Always good to see Blair Lawson when he comes out. Like the guy. Just an all-around good guy, funny, great player. Always been nice to me since I met him. Never had an issue. I don't think there's ever been a time where I've been mad at Blair or he's been mad at me. Just a really nice guy. Looks like Santa whenever he grows his beard out. Makes him like him a little bit. Makes me like him a little bit extra. <laughs> Especially come Christmas time. This is a battle on this one, man. I know for sure it's a race to five, or sorry, race to four. First match of the day against Han Yu didn't really mean much because um, he wasn't really warmed up. It was kind of awkward. It was weird, right? So. Now he's been here all day, been playing, competing all day, so he's got to be warmed up. I'm picking him as a as my opponent for the final. But it all depends what happens in this matchup, because if Brian Kanischuk can win, he's got a lot of knowledge. He's got a lower handicap, so that could be the edge there. And same thing with Guy Smith, very good player. So lower handicaps makes him a little bit more dangerous. Trying to play a safety, but he's left him the shot.
do a little safety battle on this one. It's got to be a hill hill. I'm going to change my score. There's no way these guys are playing this tight unless it's hill hill. I changed my vote. Uh, oh yeah, we're. I was going through the comments here on on YouTube. All right, so smooth play. Got to put a little viado. That's what I see in the move. These diamond tables are so small, says Mac Daddy Connor. Wow, I didn't see the miss and scratch coming. Yeah, I didn't see that either. Uh, what size are they? They're three and a half by seven. They look like bar boxes. You were right. So they are bar boxes, not six foot, seven foot. Uh, now they can't be that small, can they? No, they weren't. It just it's the camera makes it look a little bit smaller. But if I zoom in, it looks it makes it look like it's a nine footer. I think we play on eight foot, but I don't know. Maybe it's also seven. Yeah, probably if you're playing on bar boxes, it's likely seven foot, man. Man, you really roughed that table up after that power shot on the 15. <laughs> Change the whole table up. Uh, so the leagues I play in on sevens and nines, I didn't think they even made six foot diamond tables. I don't think they do. Yeah, I don't think they do. I would go defense here, said Magnetti. What would you play? I would have left the queue on the rail and forced the bank. I'd probably do it again here too. This guy is probably a better shot than me. Uh, then Bossa says, ah, nice. He nicely tied up that 12 and 15. So that's going to be easy to clean up in case he misses. All right, I caught up with you guys. Balance, man. You have to have balance in your game. Don't be too aggressive. Don't be, don't be a wuss. Have faith in your game. Have faith in your skills. Play through it. That's my advice. When I'm playing good, that's the way I'm playing. When I'm not playing good, it's because I've forgotten some of that stuff. It's not being applied. And I just played at a tournament at the... Oh, nice shot. I just played at a tournament at Sonics on the Valley Tables, and I struggled. I made it to, like, the top 12 out of 48. But I struggled. My game wasn't very good. That table kept ripping me off. Bad bounces. Couldn't figure out the speed properly. There was lots of crazy stuff. So I wasn't feeling pretty confident about my game. And decided to come and play here today. You know, I was going to play yesterday too, but I decided not to play yesterday. So, I, you know, today I wasn't going to play either. But like four people, like, hey, you're going to play? So I was like, okay, I'll play. So here I am. And I don't know, my game's going okay so far. Seeing the table anyway. Oh, is that only on two? Okay. So I don't know where these guys are at. Brian's on three. So maybe I had it backwards. Maybe it was 3 2. I'm going to take a look and take a little, little peek to see where the coins are at. All right, so it is Hill Hill. It's confirmed. The score now is 3-3. Three to three, And I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick and be right back. Well, I'll probably be back in a few minutes. I kind of feel like I should stay here and watch this one. Because then the next match will be against whoever wins here against Hanyu. And then I can maybe take a break then at the beginning of that match. That's what I'll do. Discipline, Ron. Discipline. Right? Don't just preach. Live by the word. <laughs> Living by the word, man. Word to the bird. Rack number seven, the final rack between these guys. It's a 3 3 matchup, race to four. And Guy Smith with the break, looking for some action. Would like to close this one out. Gonna make a ball off the break. He's gonna get a pretty good spread here, too. Not a whole lot of trouble. A little bit of work, of course, as usual, but. It's not bad work, but like the only thing we're thinking about here is the one on the four that's sitting in the bottom right corner right now. But he can actually start off on that if you wanted to take low ball. And high ball, well, high ball just looks like a runaway wave to happen. All the solids are on one side, all the stripes are on the other, so it's it's pretty standard table here. All positional shots required.
Robert Abernethy, Abernethy, welcome to the stream, says uh, seven and by three and a half. Correct. That's the size. Then Robert says, I agree with you, my friend. Those valley tables suck. <laughs> they all play different. Yeah, well, that's my theory. But I mean, so I, I don't like them, but I like them because without those those tables, there's a lot of players that just wouldn't be playing pool, man. Is this if if every table was a diamond table or a pair of table, there's a lot of players that just wouldn't be playing the game. They'd be discouraged. So having the valley tables helps them uh, to make the shots more consistently. It allows them to cheat the pockets a little bit. It's not a good feeling when you're a good player playing on those tables. When you're, when you're coming up in the game and you're trying to become a good player, it's a great feeling to win on those tables, man. I don't forget. I never forget my roots. I say that that way because I almost never play on a valley table anymore. The only times to play on a valley is whenever it's like league night or the playoffs are coming up. I'll have no choice but to play on valley tables then. Um, but usually my preference, if I have to choose to play on something, I'd rather play on a diamond. And the only reason why is just because, like, cue ball control, it's, it's a little bit more efficient for someone of my, my skill level. And it's even better for the guys that are higher level than that. But for the lower level players, it's a struggle, man. He's got a really nice table here, a chance to close out. Just has to figure out the last three balls in the eight ball. The eight ball goal is it has a couple different pockets, including the side pocket. Just has to figure out the path here. Gotta take that nine ball. Gonna have to play the cue ball through somehow, I think, or a big draw. Reset those last two stripes. Excuse me. Get up on the shot a little bit. Wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do, and look at that. He would have found a way. He would have been out. So Brian Kenneth check now gets a chance at this table. He gets a chance to close out the match now. Table's pretty open for him. The seven ball's in a bad spot. Two ball could be considered a bad spot, but he can take it right now. He can also set up with a seven right away, which would create less stresses at the table because now he would have most of his problems solved. It would be down to just a combination after that. Got to watch the speed on the cue ball here. A little bit too much speed. He's going to lose it. Has an option to shoot at the six ball, though, so he's still okay. What is the answer? What is the answer? Well, I don't know, man. You got to get back down to the seven. That's all I know. Combination, too, is a bit of a problem. If you don't have much confidence on the six ball right now, which should be an easier shot, then take the combo. Because then by taking the combo, you're going to create a different angle, which might be able to help you to get back down for the seven ball. Going for the five ball, it looks like. Trying to play maybe back down for the five ball or for the seven ball off the five. Gonna miss that shot though, and the seven ball is gonna get pushed over. Guy Smith with a golden chance here, a combination, an easy 13 to the side, and then the eight ball, which goes to the other side. Great opportunity to close out right now. And I think that was in due part to the server coming up because you can see that she was standing there with the coffee, whatever it was that she was getting. and. And obviously he's going to acknowledge that she's there because she's bringing something for them and maybe that threw him off a little bit. And I'm surprised they didn't play the combo there, but I guess he felt like it wasn't necessary, so he played it straight. I thought he would have played the combo there just to follow it up, make it easy. Not that it's hard the way that he set it up. It's pretty good right now. And overran the cue ball a little bit, but he still has the shot, I believe. Gonna have to settle for the eight ball either the side or the corner, one of the two. Side pocket it is. Nice and smooth stroke on that one. Everything is cleared off the table except for the eight ball. Eight ball for the win. Taking his time, making sure that he doesn't make any mistakes here. Showing some good discipline. Eight is good. Four to three, the final score. And Han Yu and Guy Smith will get going. 
We'll update the challenge bracket here. We'll bring it back. What's up, man? Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Main table. On you versus Guy Smith. You against Guy Smith. Sir. Hey, Guy, when you're ready, you can play Han Yu here. He goes to four, or you go to six. Oh, it's not four, so. What's up, man? I've been here for a whole day. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Almost done. Lots of battles left, oh, yeah. You are, you are the winner the I'm the A side winner, yeah. Uh, we'll put guy on the left, on you on the right. All right, this is basically a B-side final now. Uh, do, 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 should I switch it back? Does it look better this way? No, it looks worse. Look about this way. Okay. So I'm not sure where Guy Smith is for a Fargo, but I'll look him up real quick. Uh, 521. Playing against a uh, 619. Cargo rates are up, making this match official. Six four. No, he's a five on the A side. They just, him and Brian just played a race to four. On the A side, but not on the B side. I'll check right here. Oh, so then why did, oh, it must have been, it must have been five, four. Oh, okay. Five, three, okay, I got it. So he goes to five, okay, I'll fix that right away. That was five, three. I had the wrong score on the last one. The guy was going to five, so guy was he won five three on that one. Uh so six five on this one, one game spot. Winner of this has to try to double dip me next. B side final, rack number one. Let's get this going, baby. And let's get this going too. Right. Hammer is officially running on this match now. And I'm taking a breather here. I got to go to the bathroom, take a quick break. I'm going to fix this uh, camera real quick for you guys. And then I'll be back and update the score and continue the coverage live from the hangar. Thank you for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. I'll be back.
All right, so it's 2-0 for Guy Smith. He's at the table right now. I'll update the score. And for the cut. It's going to come up a little bit short, and he's not going to come up short on the lead. I didn't give Hanyu a whole lot to work with here. Gonna have to try to figure out the safety or a combination. A combination with a safety. Now, as long as it doesn't scratch, he didn't scratch, and now the one ball's in a bit of a tough spot. So we might have bought himself another chance. And the four ball is tied up also between the 15 and the 14. So and technically the 10 ball. Very tough to get out. He's got a bit of a chance here with this angle, but there's not enough angle to work where the, the distance is too far for him to be able to create the kind of power that he wants to be able to draw into that and open it up. It would be a great shot though, because then he had the seven balls and escape shot. This isn't a bad choice either. That that 13 ball is pretty deep in the pocket, and it's right in the middle of the pocket, so it makes the follow through draw a little bit easier. You don't have to do follow through draw; you can do follow through follow, and that will walk. That will work too here. Yeah. Uh, oh no. Oh good. Yeah. We did the follow through follow. It was just deep enough where he could have maybe easily got position off that ball. Um. Or I was trying to do something while I was talking. All right. Uh, so, yeah, he's, he's got a shot on the five ball. He needs to get a shot on that four ball. And he almost has a decent angle here, but not quite enough. So, the next best thing would be to set up an angle for a breakout with the six ball by getting a little bit closer to that. Going to go for the breakout here. Oh, and he had the three ball to break out, too. Okay. Good shot. Good shot. I didn't realize he had a three ball. Now this is the part where he's got to do all the heavy work. That four ball is just not in a good spot. There's not even a bank on it. If he doesn't break it out, he's going to have to play a few safeties to be able to get it out of there somehow. Uh, he's almost got the perfect angle here. He's got a decent angle. Could maybe follow this through and try to get the breakout here. The only thing is he doesn't want to hit either the 15 or the 10. He needs to hit the eight ball clean on this one. Or set up for a breakout angle, which is what he's looking at right now. All in on the breakout, that's usually not a good plan, but sometimes it's no other way except for that. So he might be in one of those situations. At least that's the way he's looking at this right now. It's a bit of an angle. Oops, so let's cover it. Big effort. Gonna come up short. I was just telling my wife the other day, like from the tournament at Sonics, like I didn't feel very good about the way I played. Not like the first day I thought I played okay, even though the table kept messing up with me, right? Um, but the second day, like I came in, I was just like not there. I, I didn't really want to play. I wasn't really focused. Not sure what happened there. I'm assuming it was a good hit. So I was just telling my, my wife that, you know, I, I don't know, I, I feel like maybe it's time for me to hang him up, you know, I'm a, something's wrong with me because I, w I wasn't playing very good. Like, there were lots of opportunities for me to win against my opponent, and I lost 5-2, and it could have easily been like a 4-2 my way, and then maybe I would have won 5-3 or something like that, right? <clears throat> um, but instead, I ended up losing, so then 
when I left the tournament there, and that's why I didn't play on Saturday. I wasn't going to play on Saturday because I was like, you know what? No, I'm not feeling it no more. Just maybe it's time to give it a break or retire. And I don't know. I was going to start training again starting Monday because I feel like if I need to take a break, it has nothing to do with anything else other than the fact that I need to get some practice in because I'm obviously questioning myself. I'm missing shots because I'm not, I'm not in the know, and I need to get in the know by going out there to practice. So that's kind of the way I looked at it. And so then today, these guys, everybody's asking me to play, so I decided to play, and, and I'm having a better game. Hopefully it doesn't curse me for, for the rest of the night, for the rest of the match that I have to play here. And if, you know, something goes wrong, i got to go a double set. Hopefully my game doesn't abandon me. But um, It's funny how pool is, because one day you're like, you know what, I'm done. And then the next day you're like playing decent, and you see things different. This game is madness, man. That's the way I look at it. I'll drive you nuts. Big bounce for the straight into the corner. Ah, straight in ish. Still make it anyway. And he does. Good one. He's on the board. He stops the bleeding. Needs to win five more if he wants to win this match. Guy Smith looking for three. I'll see if I'll let me go back. They're trying to figure out who broke first. I don't know, so I'm going to see if I can find it. So, and another thing that's weird about pool, okay, I'm gonna, since I was talking about how pool is kind of weird, I don't know about you guys, but like to me, like some days when I go out to play, like a certain shirt makes me feel more confident, or you know, certain socks or certain hat or shaving or getting a haircut, whatever it is, but there's something that just makes you feel more comfortable, right? So I, I do that too. And today I didn't. Today, I just kind of woke up. I looked. I said, oh, I'll just put this shirt on. I don't even care. I'll just wear this hat. <laughs> I didn't shave none of the stuff that I usually do. And I'm having a better day today than usually when I go through all my routines. So maybe it's time to give up the routines, man. I find, I don't find this match when it started. But, so that was, I thought it was almost all right. Okay, yeah, Hanyu broke first. You broke first. Yeah, so it's, so it's his break. Yeah. Yeah. I just went back to look on the tape. Okay, we're all on the same page now. Smashed it, absolutely smashed it, and a pretty decent table to work with here. Couple different options. I'm looking at the solid and I'm looking at the strikes. I like them both, but I think I would go with high ball here myself. That's what he's thinking of doing too. Not that the solids are difficult, it's just that the strikes are a little bit easier. There's less work. You're more just playing positional shots than anything else. Now, I have an interesting setup here for myself for my next match because. Well, one player I sent to the B-side earlier in the first round, and he's still here battling away. That's on you. The other player is Guy Smith. I've never played against him before. Not on a bar box or an eight foot or nine foot. I've played him on a snooker table, but I've never played him on a on eight foot. So that's a mystery for me. I don't really know what his strengths and weaknesses are. All I know is that because he plays on a snooker table, he's probably a good potter. Well, I know he is a good potter. 
The other thing I know is that um, he's got English billiards experience, so he's going to know like cannon shots, billiards. Um, he'll know the little, little touch shots that, you know, I don't know. So that, those are his strengths, right? I'm not sure what his weaknesses are, if he's got any. Right now he's playing a pretty convincing game here against Hanyu. Like the way he's working on this table, though. Gotta keep it simple, you know, but you need to know where you're going. You can't just shoot. I know that your instincts tell you just to shoot, but trust me, you, you gotta slow your game down. If this is happening to you when you're playing, and you're shooting and you're getting into trouble, just gotta slow down your game a little bit. Figure things out. And try to keep it simple, man. So he's trying to do here a little bounce off the rail to try to get that angle on the nine ball. He may not feel comfortable with that nine ball right now, so we might end up switching up here and take the, the 12 ball instead. Twenty-three minutes into this match, almost twenty-four minutes now. Gonna miss the shot to the corner. I was trying to hold position there on the 11 ball. And he's turned the table over to Han Yu. He's given him a shot here for the five with the breakout onto the three and the one. Also has an option to make the three ball. Because you're shooting over the ball, this might be uncomfortable. But I would like to take the five ball here because then I just try to go off the top rail, break out the three and the one, then I have the two balls and escape shot. If anything goes wrong with that three and one, you could always come back to it later. Um, but I don't know. I guess I'm risky sometimes when it comes to opening shots like that. But I just look at the reward, that's the way I'm looking at it. As long as I focus on the delivery of the shot, usually the breakout will work out. He's checking it out right now, but I think he's gonna have a tougher time shooting it. Being a right handed player. Couple different options here the seven or the six are both available. If he's got a good angle on the seven ball, he can draw back and try to get onto that five ball. If not, he can just play angle here. And for a big shot, it's going to miss the five. Going to end up on top of the five. Not sure what he's going to do here. Now he's got to control the cue ball. Trying not to give his opponent too much of a shot. Huh? Oh, that's Brian. Oh, wait. Third went to, uh, what's his name? Uh, he lost to Blair. Blair? Or he yeah. took it from you. Yeah, I'm assuming it's a third. Okay, here, here they are. So, and then, There's a fourth in there, too. Yeah, so the fourth, that's for Brian Kennestruck. I'm not sure yeah, where he is. So I gave that back into the pocket. Make sure he knows when you give that to him. Yeah. That that's above and beyond what the normal prize yeah. is. And I did that before. It's supposed to pay back the prize. I'll, I'll let him know. So that way, if we, we announce it to them and we give it to them, they know that that's an extra prize given. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. All right, Brian Kanischek, if you're watching the stream at any point, just know that you got fourth place. I have an envelope for you. I can probably leave it here at the hangar for you and just put your name on it. Try to message him. I'm not sure if we're on each other's Facebook or not. But I always see him. So a missed shot is going to bring Han Yu back to the table. Watch your stuff. Everybody, everybody thinks I'm the DJ because of the headset, man. I know. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No, this is the B-side final. The next match is the championship. 
I don't know. It's good competition. There was a lot of good, good players today. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, man. The DJ thing. <laughs> this guy goes up to me. Hey, yo, man. And I was like, yeah, what's up? He's like, can you play? I was like, I'm not the DJ. <laughs> I see, I see this is, can you play? I was like, I'm not the DJ, man. I don't know why. It's it's the headset. They always think I'm the DJ. And I mean, I can be wearing my, my pool hat that has the pool player shooting from JAMA, and they'll still think I'm the DJ. My shirt can literally say, can say pool player in front of you, and they'll still think I'm the DJ. <laughs> I knew guess that one ties it up at two. He broke first, so he's breaking next. He's breaking all the odd racks. See, there he's a little focused now. He's got his game face on. That's something you got to work on, your game face. Make sure you get a good game face. Smash and break, he makes a ball. Cue ball's gonna stop in the middle of the table. Beauty break. Great opportunity to get going on this rack, for sure. Eight ball is somewhat tight to the five ball, but it goes to both corners. It actually goes to the side too, on the left side middle. And yeah, that's that's about it, I guess. Very nice break. Just has to figure out where to get started. I'm thinking we're going stripes here, and there's no doubt in my mind that we're going stripes. Mainly because of where that seven ball is. And also because of where the cue ball is right now. You got a great starting point. Okay, if he bumps up, no big deal. And still has a shot to the 10. Good opportunity to maybe come over here for the nine ball. To pot the nine ball in the bottom right corner. Natural tangent line to come over with a little bit of draw. From there, natural tangent line to get set up for the... Got from the 9 to the 12. I don't know if you like the 13 ball as a finish ball. That, that's the only thing I'm not sure about. He's likely going to have to take that ball when he takes that 15 ball. So he could be setting that up right now if he wanted to. And then have the 10 ball as an escape shot. I think I might like that better. I'm not going to give him the shot on the 10 ball anyway. Has a shot on the nine ball too, but if he takes the nine, he won't have anything to shoot at next, so he has to take the ten ball. And I'm wondering whether or not he's able to get past this twelve ball clean on the cue ball. Or if he can, he's still in good shape. But if he has to run into it, then the table's going to change. He just decided to hold it there instead. This is going to be an interesting finish on this rack. Lots of people on YouTube. How's everybody doing on YouTube? Welcome to the stream, guys. A little fight on Facebook, man. Maybe it's time to uh, not, not stream on Facebook anymore. They've made me mad a few times, so it's been on my mind. Let's check out YouTube comments. Oh, Torchy you, what's up? Buggles me is here too. Welcome guys. Okay, I'm going back. I'm going back to the nineteen nineties. Let's see. <clears throat> Keep moving this up. There's a lot of comments here actually. Apologies for not keeping up with those. <clears throat> uh, we really left up the table. I remember that. What would you play? I remember that. I've seen that, seen that. 
Okay, so Bosses of Talk says the hardest thing for me to learn was when to stop attacking and play some defense. Um, that's something that's pretty common, actually. It's, a lot of people have a hard time figuring that out. Um, and I think that when you start figuring it out, you almost automatically gain like an extra 75 Fargo points. <laughs> like automatically you go from a 300 to 375, from a 500 to 575. Makes a big difference, trust me. Just balancing your game, that's all it is, right? And knowing when to, right? Uh, those side pockets on battle tables are unfriendly, says bosses. Yeah, you're right. I don't like them. I don't trust them. On these tables here on the diamond, I'll cut a ball to the side all day long. But on a on a valley, like, my butt cheeks kind of clench a little bit because I, I just don't know. I don't trust the table. It's too tight, man. It's not good. Don't feel comfortable. It's like when somebody's standing behind you and you're trying to shoot. It's that kind of uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh, and did good there to not run into the four ball, but he's going to end up running back into the four ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's better. Uh, yeah, got those side pockets. So he says, I lucked out. A really nice older gentleman told me if I could move a single slate valley from his basement, I could have it for free. So now I have the first pool table I've ever owned in my life. Cool, man. Good for you. I remember the glory days when I used to own a table at home. It was beautiful, man. But you get lazy. I don't know. Just having a table at home, you kind of get lazy about it. So my advice to you is just find ways to challenge yourself each time a little bit more. Right? So like, if you go there, just do drills that make it harder for you. Play against yourself if you're going to rack some racks. But... Be honest with yourself play with you know two players right so you when you shoot first and then you when you miss the other you um but just keep it at like one turn each or two turns each and then if you don't finish it re-rack right have some discipline pull your pants up <laughs> uh, i don't know where that came from nobody has their pants hanging down right now <laughs> that's to those 1990s kids pull your pants up uh and my game has skyrocketed yeah for sure once you once you have a table at home man you get the vibe you know you start you start seeing things you start understanding because you have way more time to kind of figure this out when you're going to practice at a pool and you're paying by the hour well it doesn't quite work out as good as you want to all the time and you're spending a lot of money and uh if you're going to be there a lot unless they have practice cards which is really good when pool halls have practice cards man bonus oh man he's gonna follow that cue ball through and scratch that's going to give Hanyu a ball in hand and a chance to be able to take the lead in this match. Um, Brian Sterling, what's happening, man? So this is B-side semi. This is B-side final now. The last one was semi, though. Technically, this would have been semi, but B-side final guy left. So the B-side semi becomes the B-side final. Boss of the Talk says, I think he did say that game he was just on was B-side. Correct, it was. Uh, Fuggles me says, Roddy, should, you should put the challenge bracket or challenge bracket on on the YouTube stream. Okay, I'll do that right now. Anyway. I got you, man. I got you. And by the way, if you guys want to talk, this is the time to talk, man, because once I start playing, I ain't playing. Oh, hang on. I got it on here. Hey, what happened to my comment? Good idea, man. Let's get that on there. I was gonna share the one from the Facebook page, but it's better to share the one directly from Challenge. So that's what I'm gonna do for you guys. Asking you shall receive, right? Um, I have to do it through the other account. Playing Dancing Queen. I haven't heard that song since I was a little guy. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, this one. Ah, uh, commercials. Every time. I have no control over the commercials. YouTube does it on its own. I figure I let them do their thing because they'll, they'll probably know best where to be able to make me some decent money from ads. By the way, like I just skipped it, right? So when you skip the ads, you're not helping me out, just so you know. Or when you watch the ads, I get paid. I know it sucks. Just turn down the volume, right? 
Manda bigger with you, man. <laughs> not kidding. I, I, sometimes I get so frustrated, I just skip it anyway. Even on my own, like just now, I was like, I was so frustrated. I was like, I'm just going to skip it. I cut myself out of my own ad revenue. <laughs> All right, so there it is. I shared it. Click that. That'll take you to the challenge bracket. Switch back here to Facebook. Because maybe these guys are going to start talking again. They've been they've been quiet all day. I don't know what happened to them. They must be tied up and gagged or something. They're all quiet. All right, it's 3-2 for Hanyu. So let's get that fixed up right now. What's that? If a break, yeah, you get spotted and re-rack and break. Or you get, or sorry, you get spotted and landed or re-rack and break. Yeah, so he has the option here. Made the able off the break. You can either spot it or you can rack and re break. It's up to you. All right, so that was shared. Karen Skelly Dotson, what's happening? Says, hey, is this the only match stream today? No, we had a bunch of different matches throughout the day. It's, it started off a little bit earlier. We're getting close to that end now because it might cut off. So for those of you that are watching now, um, if the. If the stream cuts off on Facebook, just click on the link. So on the post for this Facebook stream, on the post, I say I have a little part that says YouTube live stream can be found at. And, and that link right there, you click on that link, that'll take you to YouTube. If we get cut off early, then you can still watch the final uh, on YouTube. Because YouTube allows you to go a little bit longer than Facebook. And it's better quality anyway, so you'll probably like it more. Probably the reason why there's like 90 people watching right now on YouTube, because it's just better quality. And him, Facebook. Why did they do 720? I still don't get it. Every time I talk about Facebook, I don't get it. We're in the 1080 era, man. 4K era, technically. And if you have a good camera, you can. I think they have 20K now. 20K camera. If I can do that one day, I'll, I'll do it for you guys. But that's going to cost me like 70 grand, maybe 80 grand just for one camera. Good pace. You have the combination here. Has a little bit of a mess here with that 15 and 11 ball, and he doesn't quite have the angle to be able to break it out yet. So he's got to figure out what to do. And what I'd be doing here is trying to figure out, first of all, the combo with a light pace, and then just see if I can maybe make that 15 ball to the left side middle pocket. And with an angle where I push the 15 ball forward and have the 15 ball next to the top left corner. Forty minutes into this match now. Carol says I was here earlier, but no sound. Oh, I see. My bad. I'm not sure what. Like I don't know. If I'm playing, I'm not talking. Obviously, there's not going to be a sound. And these these guys here like to play music all the time, and they don't really play low. It's kind of loud, so it's it's tough to deal with the copyright issue. So I just make sure that when I'm not on the mic, that it's quiet. So I guess it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, Brian said, wow, nice save. That was impressive. Said Wyatt PV, welcome to the stream, Wyatt. And Barry said, Brian Sterling. Okay, when you guys said that was impressive, and you said, Barry, who were you talking about? Or what were you talking about? What happened? I want to know now. I'm just catching up. Uh, why it says all i seen was the cut down in the corner and brian says needs too much energy torture you says if he is a five i'm a one <laughs> uh oh so that must have been when i was gone and i wasn't here and i didn't see that shot damn that's what it was cue ball goes flying uh, guy up one nothing okay that was earlier focus me says oh my but she says, who's this guy? <laughs> Who plays that shot? This fuck with me. So what happened? I, I got now I'm curious. There's impressive, and then there's who plays that shot. What did he do? I was away. I missed on something good, man. I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. And makes it said fuck with me. A hack. <laughs> Just kidding. That's torpy. 
you guys are funny even though i'm catching up i'm trying to figure out what happened and it's really funny that the conversation right now is really funny mr shot maker off the 15 and sheep he's on fire he may run out the set it's all gonna break lucky for han yeah if there's one of breaks man that changes everything honestly if a player is playing high they're breaking making a ball oh you're in danger man you just sit there and, and watch them play i always think about rush on down rodney morris in that one down eight to one in a race to nine on winter breaks opponent dry breaks on rack number 10 opponent comes back and wins nine eight crazy crazy winter breaks is it's wild especially at the high level really wild man because there's like huge momentums but nobody's ever out as long as they get a break they're never out they could always get back in can't leave an open table for han says fuggles me uh... oh, there it is and Torture says that's what happens when you leave the trouble ball for last. But he sort of had to. Yeah, that's right. Oh, so you're talking about that one where that ball with the four ball was jammed around all three of the stripes. He didn't really have anything there. There was no way he could get it out. He, he had to actually be a little bit more patient there, try to find a ball in hand and a safety to be able to bank that out and free soak his opponent. And even that was going to be challenging to be able to accomplish. Oh no, Han, he's going to hit the side of the horn of the pocket. Turns the table over to Guy Smith. Gives him a chance here on the 15 ball with the angle to get set up for the 11 ball. It's Christmas, man. Just needs to figure out the finish here. Because after that, he still needs to get on the 10 ball and then the 8. The 8 only goes to one pocket at the moment. Well, technically, it does go to the left side middle pocket. And it kind of goes to the bottom left corner if you had ball in hand or got perfect position. I like that he's choosing to take this 10 ball here. That's going to help him to get a little bit straighter on this 15 ball and get him straighter on the 11 ball. Gonna miss the shot though. That was key to make the shot first. And you jumps up from his chair right away. He gets straight to work. You can see the opportunity here. Nice angle on the on the three ball to get set up for the one ball. Needs to come over for the five. And the six ball had to be the finish ball. Or I guess you don't have to do that. You can play the three, go back to the five, come back to the six, and finish with the one. That will work too. He's gonna open up the one ball and the eight. Has an option here to take the five ball, but he's looking at the one ball. The five ball is a real problem. The one ball has a couple of different pockets, so good choice here to take the five. Oh, I see. You saw the sound chirping, says Harold. He made a kick shot on the eight to win first game. Oh, man. I have to go back and watch that. Uh, okay, so these guys are 40 minutes in. Uh, so at six and a half hours six and a half hours and I'll, I'll take a look at it by the way as i just said earlier this will cut off on facebook but it will continue on youtube so if you watch on youtube you're not going to get cut off if you get cut off on facebook all you gotta do is switch over to youtube you'll be able to watch the final whoever wins this match will have to play against me next and they have to double dip me because i won the a side which i never won the a side not, not in a while anyway and, See how that goes. I haven't played in a while either, but I'm okay. I'm dealing with it. Uh, all right, CC so should have uh, should have slid down with draw easy pool player DJ. <laughs> yeah, I'm the pool player DJ man. Thirteen key ball says fuck with me. I, I don't know. That was a little while ago. Now I can't remember. I don't like the nine of the key ball says fuck with me. I don't think he'll get out here. Said Michael Johnson. Not the athlete, Michael Johnson, right? Yeah, oops, it says facts. That's how I practice, says Michael Johnson. Yeah, you, you got to practice with purpose, man. Don't waste your time. If you're going to go out there and put in three hours, get something out of it. Don't just go there and rack balls for three hours and, and run racks for three hours. You run six out of 25 racks, and then you're like, okay, I got better. You didn't get better. You got to work on it. You got to challenge yourself too. Always put yourself against yourself mentally so you can play your best. 
Buggles me says Facebook sucks for streaming. I agree. It, it totally sucks, man. And I can see it because more people are watching on YouTube, so I appreciate it. Smash and pray says Fuggle me. Fuggles me. Um the update that yeah, it is four two. That is correct score. And they're talking about the first talking about the first rag run by guy. Oh, I see. Well, he, he's a really good player, right? Like, he's got his uh, English billiards knowledge, which helps him a lot with, like, playing billiards and cannons, caroms, that kind of stuff. Um, has a snooker background as well, so he's, he's got good cue ball control, good good aim. A lot of knowledge, but the switch over, right? Because he's mainly a snooker English billiards player, and now he's playing more eight ball. So it's kind of like learning to adapt as you go through the process of playing people and just learning how to adapt a bit more for each match. But at least he, he's consistently playing, so I, I like to see that, man. Uh-oh. Oh, he's just missed that side pocket. Hit the horn, but it's good. Uh, I like seeing him coming out to play because that's a good sign, man. You know what I mean? He's trying to learn more. He's trying to adapt. He's trying to compete. All good things. The game keeps growing when people keep coming out to play, right? Dan Anderson says he ran out in a kick shot on the 8th. Then he broke and ran after that. I'm going to have to go back and watch that. Second rank guy played a combo on his first shot. Ridiculous. <laughs> All right. I got to go back and watch that. I'm going to I'm gonna try to clip one or two. If I can clip both, I'll clip both. But I think I can only clip one. So I can only clip one of the two shots to put it on, on Facebook. Which one of the two is better? The first rack one or the combination on the second rack? Because whichever one you guys say it is, that's the one I'm going to hunt for. I'm going to clip it. I'm going to try to put it on Facebook for you guys to be able to watch it again. And just let me know. Uh, Dan says, you went to the washroom and missed an amazing first two games by a guy. Damn. Regret that, man. It always happens like that, too. I walk away and it's like, boom. Somebody does something amazing. Oh, man. Missed out on the highlight of the day, it sounds like. A couple of them. What's up, Elaine? Welcome to the stream. Arsenal says, great out, buddy. Yeah, definitely. All right, so you guys tell me, was it shot number one or shot number two? Harold said, so the first one was a better one. Okay. Was it a, like a ridiculous bank, reverse bank or something like that? I kind of want to go back and watch it now, but that's 40 minutes. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, right, it's the first time here, so it's a and a half or so. Okay, just missed the first rack, so to get out, eh? Okay, let's see. Oh, no, okay. The hun you broke first. I gotta watch that first rack now. I'm watching it right now. I'm watching the first rack. I want to see. So the, the the last shot on the first rack was the eight ball, and then the other one was the first shot in the opening of the rack. Oh, well, he got himself in a tough cut, and he made a beautiful cut on the seven ball. Made the five ball. I'm coming up to it right now. Oh, wow. What, bank corner? Is that what he did? <clears throat> he must have done a bank corner. That's what I'm thinking. Pass that stripe to the corner. Looks like he had a situation there where, like, he thought he was stuck and maybe he figured it out. I'm gonna call the bank. Side. Oh, wow. Oh man, what a shot. What a shot. 
That was beauty. That was beautiful, man. Okay, now I gotta see this combo. That was a beautiful shot on that April. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna try to guess what the combo was. Opening shot. So he made the one to the five combo. Oh my god, wow. That's a big shot. Did he really do that? I wish I can clip both of them now. Did he really do that? Hang on. He's, he's checking it out right now on my. As I went back. Oh man, he did. He nailed it. Oh. All right, so maybe I don't want to play a guy. Maybe I'm better off playing against Hanyu. <laughs> wow, that was crazy, man. At that point, like, doesn't matter who you are, you're thinking to yourself, I'm in trouble. This guy is on fire. Crazy. I just seen it, man. Thanks for the heads up, guys. That was awesome. I, I love pool. Like, I love pool more than pool loves itself. Pool has no idea how much love I have for it. <laughs> so when I see like things like that, it just makes me happy, man. It makes my day. Too bad they weren't on the highlight reel. Oh, so disappointed on that one. All right, so Hanyu's on five now. I too is on the hill. I too, Hanyu, I got it. Thank you, Harold. That was ridiculous, man. Both those, that long, that long combo was gross. Like I mean, in a good way. I can't believe he made that combo, man. Wow. And then, oh yeah, that that kick shot on the April, so bold. Absolute gold. Highlight of the day, man. Gotta be clipped out. I won't be able to clip it out, so I'm gonna have to eventually do some major editing, but that'll come in time. You didn't see the eight ball kick. Okay, so I'm gonna, that's what the one I'm gonna put on Facebook if I clip it out. I know where it's at now, so that I just find it, I'll clip it, I'll put it on there for you guys to get a chance to see it. Ball in half on you, a chance to close out. Uh, Michael Johnson says, uh, LOL, no, the aspiring pro pool player, Michael Johnson. Remember the name for when I snap off my first big world title. Nice. I'll remember, man. I'll remember. You got to do it in the world record speed like the other Michael Johnson. Set a record, man. Yeah, that, that was a beautiful, beautiful pull from Guy at the beginning of this match, man. Makes a guy a little nervous watching a guy play like that. <laughs> Funny Harold says, I know you get distracted. Squirrel. <laughs> what what movie is that from? Yeah, always refer to that, but yeah, that's me, man. <laughs> so not gonna be there's not gonna be a whole lot of commentary when I'm playing in the next matchup. Just so you guys know. I'm gonna be trying to focus on the game. Yeah, I know, like, on you, like I said, I beat him on the A side in the first round. And he's been on the B side ever since. And so, like, he's he's got a point to prove, so I gotta get focused here. Okay, well, he's gonna finish that table. I gotta go to the bathroom real quick, come back. And we're going to get started because it looks like he's almost out.
Safety, safety battle has begun, so I guess when you didn't find the finish there earlier, like I thought he was going to find, I thought it was over then. Snatch the pebble, grasshopper. Uh-oh, didn't want to open that up. That opens up the table now, and that's going to give Guy a chance to be able to get a little closer in this matchup. It's Two more to get to the last rack. Three more to win. I'd like to just get to the last rack at the very least because if anything can happen at that point. They're uncomfortable here on the shot shooting over the ball. I missed the shot. Oh no. And he's going to leave. The eight ball here to the corner for Han Yu, an easy out for the win. No, scratching on the eight is not a loss, Richie, Brian. All right, so that's going to set us up here. I got to make sure I enter this on the challenge bracket for sure. That's going to take us to the B side final now. Score there. 5 2. And Blair forfeits there, so we'll keep it 0 0. 
Of when you were the winner. Okay, so that takes us to the championship match now. And like I always put myself on the right. I don't know. I, I always put myself on the right because like it's just um I don't know, it's just like being courteous instead of putting myself in the front and the spotlight type thing. So I never put myself in the in the front. But this time I, I have to because I won the A side. So one of my rules are that whoever wins the A side has to go on the left for the first set. So that way if there is a second set, we'll know because the name will be on the right side then and then you'll know that the A side guy lost and, and is now on the B side. Um, so the race here is uh, seven four seven six. Sorry, race should match. Give me a second here. I'm just setting up everything here for the for the championship. So on you lost to me at the beginning of the day on the very first match, went to the B side and has battled his way all the way through back here. So he's here to play. He's here to put up a fight. And I haven't played in a little while. So we'll see how this goes. Typically, the way it usually goes is that whoever the A side guy is will almost 60% of the times lose that first set because he's not ready to go. The other guy just finished battling a few, a few matches. So he's feeling pretty good about his game while the a-side guy is just trying to figure out how to play again to get warmed up but then if the a-side guy loses the first set like 60 percent of the times they're going to win that second set because by now there there's two things that happen they are now uh warmed up and they're also pissed off they just lost so now they got more focus they want to play better it just kind of changes how the player thinks and, and plays uh all right so here we go championship match me and han Yu. Race to seven for him, race to six for me. He's a 619 Fargo rate. I'm a 588, and we're about to get it on. Let's do it. Wish me luck. This is going to be a tough one, I promise you. But I'm going to try my best. I guess it doesn't really matter. All right, we're going to get started. I get the first break.
took a bad situation and I turned it into a bit of an advantage by playing a smart safety. Hopefully it pays off, but the idea was right. Okay. Okay. Going to call the seven ball on the side. Nice to see you, man. It's like getting my favorite pool cue back from the shop. <laughs> Yeah, man. I thought you moved away. Nice shot. Yeah, championship match. First rack, first set. I beat him. I beat him on the A side in the first round, and he's been playing the B side the whole time. So now he's got a chance to double dip. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm I'm okay. Like I. I went and played in that tournament at Sonics on Thursday and Friday. I, I didn't play very good. I finished in 12th or something like that, but it wasn't impressive. And then I, I was going to quit because I was like so frustrated with my game. Um, and then I didn't play yesterday. And then today I wasn't going to play either, but I brought my cues just in case. And then yeah. everybody's like, hey, are you going to play? I was like, no. Are you going to play? I was like, no. After the fourth person asked me, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll play. So yeah. then I played. And I ended up winning the A side. But he's a tough player, man, and I, like I said, I beat him the first time. He was telling me, yeah. Oh, that's too bad. All right, so Hanyu's going to strike first off my break. Try to play a good shot, but didn't work out. Oh no! And oh, it does go in. I thought it was gonna hang up. One nothing. It's break. I think that was four seconds, man. <laughs> all right so he, he strikes first and it kind of that's the way it usually goes i'm not worried about it i'm good i'll strain out even if i lose a couple of racks at first i'll strain out at some point my game will get going rack number two on you to break Smashed it, made the seven ball. Really nice break. And it looks like it's a pretty good spread. Like there's not really much work to do here. Really nice break for him. I kind of knew he was gonna bring it to me, man, because like I said, I beat him on the A side in the first round. So like he's hasn't been thinking about getting even with me the whole time, but he's been trying to win ever since. And now that the reality is that he could beat me and, and get even with me. It's it's now like an opportunity for him to be able to increase his focus and be more more um, accurate at the table because of it. But I'm not worried about it, man. I just hope that the rolls don't go against me because every time I play against him, the rolls go against me. So I'm hoping that I don't I don't need the rolls to go for me. Oh yeah, let's start this clock. I don't need the the rules to um to work for me. I just need to make sure that neither one of us has any advantage or disadvantage to the rules. Let us play the game from our skill and that's all we need. Perfect shot, but he's gonna tie up the fourteen ball. And maybe draw back here to open up that six or that uh yeah six and the fourteen don't quite have it comes up short my shot and i'm shooting stripes and this is our challenging table we'll see if i can work it out i'll be back
I'm not sure what I could do there, man. I, I didn't really make myself any good there. I set up three balls with one shot. Tied up three balls in one shot, but there's a possibility of a combo there, so it's, it may not be as bad as it looks. I, I go, as long as it ties that up again, I'm okay. Yeah, I'll be back. I, I think the combo might go. I had to play the comp. Then what do I do after that?
Yeah. It didn't spread out very good. No, I should have squeezed it tighter. I want to see about trying to get some magic racks from the tournaments here. Then you get consistent packs. Tournaments will win some classes. This is over in the fucking place. It's getting close to it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, that six ball and five ball are fighting for me. They're doing the best to fight for me, but he's got a couple of options for breakouts here. Has to use the 13 ball, I think, to get it out. Especially if the 10 ball goes to the left side middle pocket, then that would be a good out. And tie it up to that 13 ball now. If he doesn't have the 10 ball, he's got to take the 9 or he's got to play so He can try to play the combination, maybe. Kind of risky. 13 to the 6 to the 11. Top right corner. Tough to make the good decisions when you're in a tough spot. He's a good player, though, so he's going to work it out. He's not getting out now, says Fuggles me. I don't know. I've seen him get out before, man. I've seen him get out before on situations where it looks like there's no way he's going to get out. So he's a very crafty player, but the, the options here are very limited. It really just comes down to the nine ball. And from there, you need to find some sort of opening. The three ball going over top of the 13 ball absolutely killed the runout right there. That doesn't mean that, yeah, doesn't mean that he can't figure it out. He's going to call a safety. Trying to leave me something tough. And I know he's going to tie it up here, so like I'm just going to be patient. As long as it gives me a shot, I'll try to find a way to play safety back. I'm not in a rush here. All right, I'll be back. And then that one ball going where it is protects me from him going to the tight ball. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see if he makes an opener here. It's not an easy out of this. Oh, there is. 
I don't know. Maybe like a rifle off the first tee for the Conquer. Rifle off the first tee, come on to the 611. Oh. Wait a minute, I really want to go out there. I didn't think that he can make it past that one. Yeah, that was a nice shot. Very nice shot. I, I should have saved that one. So he's got a chance to get out. He got that 11 ball out now. And the 10 ball goes to the corner. So he's just got to see which way he wants to play this. But it actually goes to the top right corner. So if he played down speed, he can just get shape for the 10 ball and roll that forward and have a shot on the 13 ball. However, he still needs to open up that 8 ball. So he's looking at all these options here. Looks like he's going for the breakout here first. 10 ball to the corner with an angle to pump into that 3 and 13 ball. And he needs to have something to be able to break out that 8 ball next or a shot where he can play shape for the 8 ball next. He got the 13 ball out, but he hooked himself behind the 3 ball. And it's too close to jump. Gonna have to go for a kick shot. Looking for a good leave at the very least if he doesn't make the ball. But if he makes the ball, there's a small chance he might get onto the eight ball. Gonna miss it. It's gonna be a ball in hand for me. I gotta work this out. Good opportunity here.
understand what I was down. I, I was safe from the scratch. I didn't have to worry about scratching. Yeah, so it just top spin, but I put left hand spin because I wanted to strain it out. Yeah, I threw it, yeah. Oh, another chance. Tough shot, though. Yeah, I wish I would have left that seven ball a little bit closer to the pocket, though, because then it gives me more outs. Right? He's got to figure out a safety. He can't really go for it here. But I would. I would go for it. Oh, a tough cut. The only good thing about it is it's got the seven ball blocking the scratch. The seven ball is blocking the scratch. Or you can bank it. Yeah, yeah you can, like put it right on top of the seven. Yeah. You're going for it? Oh, he went for it. Crazy guy. I'll be back. Or more. <laughs> yeah. Two one. There's a bit of a battle that one. I have to figure it out. I bought myself a good advantage there when I played that last safety. I always gonna make a few balls, laying out a little bit of steam on this break. But I don't think he's got much of a shot. He's right on the four. And I have to play a safety and turn the table over, I think. Not sure if I like uh, solids or stripes here. I kind of like the stripes, only because of where the one and the 12 are. But the one isn't that bad of a ball to deal with. And the stripes are a little bit better because of where the eight ball is. You play the 13 ball shape here on the eight ball. But I guess the solids aren't that bad. You got a couple of options on the left and the right for the eight ball. Gonna have to play a um, safety shot or a bank or a kick. Okay, so the stream cut off on Facebook. Okay, gonna call the eleven ball. So we're only on YouTube now.
Beautiful shot. I don't know if I caught that, but that was a beautiful shot. Long combination. He didn't have any other choice. Beautiful shot. Just enough to get onto the nine ball. A little awkward here, but he's all right still. He could actually take the 13 ball right now if he wanted to instead. Probably the better option. He's looking at it right away. That's what he's going to do. I expect there to be some runouts coming from him. I'm not going to be shocked by this. I just got to do my best to continue to have the lead in the match. And as long as I keep having the lead, then I should be able to get to the finish first. But I expect this kind of stuff. I expect some push. This wasn't very good. He still has a back cut to the corner, but tougher shot to make. And the cue ball control is going out the door. Though you're going to play three rails, so you should get something on the eight ball. This all depends on the pace. Makes a beautiful shot. Oh, and he just missed the scratch. A little bit of luck there. I'm not surprised by that. He always has good luck against me. Ties it up at two. It's my break. Get a little battle on this one. When it rains, it pours, then I guess uh, momentum's on his side right now because I just came up dry. But that's not uncommon. I do come up dry a lot. I think I had to switch over to the left side again. I, was, I came in today and I started breaking from the left side and everything was coming up dry no matter where I set my, my spot from. Um, so then eventually I went to the right side and I made a ball right away. And as soon as I made that ball, I was like, okay, well, this is the spot. This is where I'm going to break from. And I've been breaking from the right all day long. But now that, that's another rack that came up dry on my break, so I think I might have to switch back to the left side. Maybe I'm a right in the day and a left on the night kind of guy. <laughs> Lots of battle in this one, tied at two. He goes to seven, I go to six. But this is going to be another run out here. Position on the nine ball, if he gets it, he's out. And that's not good. When you get this guy going, he starts running tables, you're in trouble, man, because he's going to be looking for another one after that on his break. But I'm telling you, I'm not phased by it. As soon as I get my chance, I'm going to do my best. I think you got the perfect window for the nine. He's waiting for somebody to shoot so he can take a look. Pretty sure you got it, though. So he doesn't have it. If he had, he would have taken it already. Or maybe he's trying to see, like, 
what he can do for position, keeping it simple so he can make it. No, I don't think he has it. Gotta play shape here. That ball pushes that ball closer to nine. He's in trouble. Man, he looked up right away. He's not happy about it. Nine ball used to go to the pocket. Now it doesn't. Limited options now, too. Got to go for the breakout here and sell for a long shot on the 11 ball. Or got to break out the 9 ball with the 11. Comes up short, turns the table over. I'll have a chance, but very difficult table here. A couple of, couple of challenging angles that I got to figure out. So I could have taken that two ball, but I figured that two ball blocks a nine ball and it blocks it pretty good. So there was no need for me to take it. Plus the angle on the two ball wasn't going to be good to hold position for the six ball. So that's why I went with the shot that I went. And I was trying just to move that ball over a little bit. I wasn't trying to like move it over a lot. So the idea was to just to put it to the horn and I overplayed it. So now I'm giving him a chance to be able to get out here still. But I'm hoping that my uh, two ball being where it is and the nine ball being where it is will end up resulting in me getting an opportunity. But We'll see. We'll see if the gamble was good or if there, it was a bad gamble. I've been trusting my instincts so far all day, and they, they've been paying off for me. So we'll see if this one paid off, too. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're going to get perfect shape here. Perfect shape, side or corner. And that was a really good positional shot by him, so not much I can do about it. I thought I played a smart shot, and unfortunately, I just played it a little bit too heavy there. or would have been, been good on my leave. And that's kind of been the case for me so far today with all my safeties. I've been shooting them just a little bit too hard, not quite getting the result that I want to get every time. I think he's going to corner. Yeah, he's going to corner. Missed the shot. I think he left me the six. Other dog.
All right, take the lead on the match. Nicely done, Ross says fuggles me. Thank you. I mean, that was a crazy lead. Uh, bosses, who are you talking about when you say he's a really smart player and you find shape really well? Talking about Han Yu, he's pretty good. He's got a really great cue ball control, too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three, six, seven. Okay, open table. I'll be back. I left uh, a little bit too much of a shot there. I was supposed to go more to the right. I'm forcing to do something with the 11 or the 14 ball. But I left him a shot on the 12. And so he's got an opportunity here. And the 13 beam where it is allows him to get the break on the 15 ball. Too much of an opportunity left here for my opponent. I was going to get straight through it. Break out the 15 ball right now or get position on it. That, that's half the battle right there. And I believe that 10 ball goes to the side pocket past the 9 ball. So he's actually sitting pretty good on this table. That was a big, big no-no by me. I shouldn't have given him that much. I was supposed to take away the 12 ball completely instead of giving him a straight on shot. Live and learn. Let's see if uh, something pans out here in the end for me. But looking like it's going to be a tied up match right away. I think you got perfect on the 15 ball. Doesn't seem to be too concerned. Decent angle to get set up for the uh, 10 ball next, which is what he needs to do. The 11 ball is not a problem either because it goes to the bottom left corner. So it's all right. And now he might actually, well, he can, he can still take the 10 ball, but now you're going to open up the one and the six. So you're almost better off taking that 14 ball. And maybe set up for the nine ball next. Is that a crossroads? Because he's going to open things up and change the table a little bit here if he goes for that 10 ball to the side. I guess he's kind of leaning on making sure that he has a shot on the 9 ball next. But 
Things are going to change here for the 11 ball, too. Uh, looks like you got good on it. I see the 11 ball. That was the work right there, just trying to find a shot on the 11 ball or getting the shape on the 14 ball. Oh, no, no, he tied up the nine. Oh, man. He had the table open there. I'm not sure what he was thinking about. I know, obviously, he didn't intend to hit that nine ball, but the risk to go that way, that, that's what I'm talking about. Now he's got to try to play safety with everything close to a pocket. Or he's got to play a big bank and then try to maybe get off the rails and break out the nine ball somehow. Close to his work, says Fuggles me. That's dangerous. Lucky. Hitting all these balls, not good. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you, these are all the things that you, you kind of want to try not to do. But when you first start playing pool, you do that a lot. Uh, he has no choice but to go for the big shot here. Needs to get a little bit of luck here for the breakout or to set up for a bank side. Oh, and he made the shot, but he gets hooked. No way to hit this ball directly. Off the rail with some spin is about the only thing you can do. Really tough to do here, too. Puggles me says he played this rack poorly. I think it was more situational than anything. going to make my seven ball. It's going to be a ball in hand. I had a bit of a mess there still. So I had to play a safety. I figured I'd give him a little bit of the nine ball to open up my eight ball, and then I'll still have the one ball to shoot out of the five. All right, I'll be back.
I should have switched sides. I, I went to switch side and I was like, nah, just go back to the other side. Just adjust where you're going to put the spot. Not good. Not good. Dry break and an opportunity here, but there's a few breakouts to, to do before you can get anywhere. No matter which way you go, solids or stripes. So a little bit of a battle on this rack. And one of the balls out needs to get the nine ball out now. He can do that after here with a uh, ten ball. After he makes the thirteen ball. Or not the ten ball, that's a fourteen ball, sorry. Now the only thing is that he's gotta use that seven ball to break things out, so we'll see if my if my saws are loyal to me or if they're gonna betray me in this moment. Nice shot, but he got kind of screwed here. I think he can still make the 11 ball, though, so it's not too bad. The big thing is that he got the 9 ball open. It's pretty close. I'm not sure if he's got it. If he does got it, it's really, really close. They might have to play the 11 ball here. Losing control of the cue ball, but the 10 ball goes to the corner, so he's got escape shots. Very good shot. Good discipline. The 9 ball will be the the finishing shot and should be able to run this table out a little bit fortunate there that I got that second game lead because I'm going to need it Put some spin on that yeah he's got some good spin control every time we play he usually beats me and, and a lot of times it's because I'm you know doing the stream I'm running the tournaments I'm running around my head's cut off most of the times um but no excuse because there's times when we play where I'm not streaming and he still beats me. But in tournament competition, so far we are uh, eight, I think we played eight times so far. He's won five, I won three. Oh, he's gonna miss that one though. Table's turned over, left me a couple of shots here. I'll try to close this rack up.
Yeah, maybe I should have. I didn't think hard enough. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I should have thought about that. You're right. Bad turnover. Oh, man. Thank you, Michael Johnson. I know we, we all said the same thing. I, like uh, my buddy Greg saying here, like, why did you hold it? You could have just played through. My bad. It happens, right? I'm not going to play perfect, man. But I, I was trusting my arm there, and then obviously it backfired on me. Another thing, too, is that I went down for the shot, and I didn't really assess it. I just kind of said, oh, yeah, well, I just got to roll this up a little bit, right? So then, And that's the way I went, but I should have actually reset it there. So learning experience for me. And I'm okay with it, like I said. I'm not playing bad. I still have uh, one game lead if I lose this one. And um, I'm, I'm still in control, even though I just cost myself a rack here. Oh, well, he's okay. He can still make it. Michael Johnson says it happens, but when you're doing extreme holds like that, you have to use a lot of throw. Yeah, and so that's what I was trying to do, but unfortunately, I just hit it a little too heavy, man. Oh, no, and he's going to miss that eight ball. He jumped up on the shot, though. He shouldn't have jumped up on the shot. And I have a shot on this five ball, but I don't know if I'm going to get that one ball shape. Luck shines upon me right now. I gotta use that momentum, man. Because I usually don't have luck in pool. Usually it's the opposite. And if, when I do get luck, it's usually because of skill behind it. But this time it was luck. Like I should have been punished there. And I don't know why he didn't just take that nine ball right off the hop. Whatever the case, though, I'll take it, man. Just win, baby. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm just, you know. I'm trying to be focused, like I said. The win-loss is not as important to me as just making sure that I'm playing my best game. And I feel like I was playing my best game throughout most of the day, but right now it's like kind of slowly falling apart. Um, the consistency is starting to go away, so I, I got to try to find a way to shut down before, you know, I end up regretting not being able to finish. I think it came up dry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five, six, seven, yep, yeah, my shot.
Well, I didn't get it, man. I was going to ask him to come hit the, the replay because I had a feeling I was going to make the shot, right? But then I just went with it. All right, that's going to be the match. I got out. Nice way to get out, too. Nice way to get out. 6-2, final score. And I've overcome a new on the first set. He was on a terror. He was on a path. He was trying to get even. And I knew it, but I just had to keep my cool, man. And a couple of opportunities that he didn't capitalize on ended up turning an opportunity for me to be able to win. Thanks, guys. Beautiful shot. Yeah, beautiful. I know, man. I was just looking at the shot. I was like, I don't really have anything. So I was going to play the cut. I was going to play the cut to the bottom right corner first. And then I was like, okay, well, that's not going to go. Then I thought about the bank, and I said, well, that might not go bank side either. Then I said, well, maybe the bank corner, right? So I said to myself, just hit it one-third of the ball, add a little bit of right-hand spin to widen the angle, and let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, and it went in. It was, it was a really nice shot. It really was. Holy shot, says Michael. Does that make up for my, uh, my trying to hold position on that ball? I think it does. Big shot there. Nice shot, Rod, says. Um, Puggles me. Richie Bryan says that as well. I'd still cut that, says Michael Johnson. <laughs> Michael Johnson. I was going to do the same thing, man. I swear to God. Look, I'm going to go up there. I'm going to try it, okay? I'm going to try the shot with a cut. I feel like I could have made the shot, but I'm going to try it, okay? We'll see. Uh, good shooting, man. Thanks for the stream. You're welcome. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's not often that I get to win a tournament, but I, I played a pretty good shot. It, it skipped. All right. So we have a couple of big highlights. I think my, my, my bank might be the highlight of the day. I never really have a highlight of the day, but I think that might be the one. Thank you, Steve Delling says, great win. Uh, and Michael Joss says, yes, I did it um all right so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go try the cut shot okay don't go anywhere i'm gonna try the cut shot first because i'm pretty sure i can make it i'm gonna try it I, I thought about it. Yeah, I got close. I almost got it. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Whew. I'm tired, man. That was, that was pretty good. Smoked them, Ross. This fuggles me. Not really. He gave me some chances. Elaine Arsino, Arsino, how you doing? Says so great win, Rod. Thank you, sir. Robert Griffith says congratulations, Rod. Thank you. If you guys enjoyed the way that I played, give me a like right now. I would appreciate it. We went just a little bit over an hour there on, on that match. Whew. All right, I'm tired. Uh, yeah, let's do some. Well, wait, let's leave that there for a second. Bring that down. All right. Uh, the Hangar Billings and Sports Lounge is where we're at right now. 121 Skirfield Boulevard. If you want to give them a call to book a spot, maybe you got a party in mind, uh, Christmas season, right? There's a lot of a lot of different parties going on there um, afterwards too. Or maybe you got like a nice summer party going on. The hangar is a spot that you go you can go to. And if you want to give them a call to book a spot for your event, call them at 204-560-2929. They're going to do their absolute best to take care of you. If you come out here, you're going to enjoy it. A great atmosphere and great service. And uh, yeah, you'll have a good time, I promise. All right. Um, wow. What a, what a day. I went out like a champ. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is the first time checking me out on YouTube. Rod Regatta slash CSL Manitoba. You're on it right now. So all you got to do is subscribe. Don't know how to subscribe? Close the chat. 
and then you'll be able to like the stream once you close the chat and you'll also be able to share the stream and you'll also be able to subscribe all three things happen once you close the chat all right oh what a day man i'm feeling pretty good about my game right now because i wasn't going to play today there was no way i was playing today but then four people asked me to play so i was like okay i'll play and well, i ended up winning the tournament Joe Cave says, great shooting rod. Thank you, Joe Cave. All right. So thanks, guys, for everything. Uh, let's go to the last highlight. Not sure what the last highlight was. It was saved. Oh, somebody tried to hit the, the save. I got to see it again. I can't believe somebody saved that. Cool. Just caught it at the end. Nice shot. Nice shot, nice shot. All right, guys, that's it. Sack of O. Nice shooting, says the boys. Thank you, guys. Everybody's messaging me. Wow, man. Good job tonight, says Dave Wilkes. Must be proud. Yeah, it feels pretty good, man, because I've been having some struggling times, right? I uh, Just a few days ago, I was talking about how, like, it's time for me to hang them up for a bit. Maybe, I'm, you know, I'm getting too old. The eyesight's going on me. A couple different things are just going through my mind, like most pool players do when they're not having a good day at the tables. And uh, I just feel, I felt so deflated that day. Like I wasn't even interested in playing and winning. And I didn't like that feeling. So that's all, you know what, maybe it's time to hang them up. And then today, playing here today, well, obviously that's going to spark a little bit of me wanting to play some more now. Watch out for Thursday. Round Robin, guys, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Everybody stay home. Save your money. I'm coming for all your money. I'm kidding, I'm not. Uh, but I'm probably going to play on Thursday. And hopefully I'm playing just as good as I was today. A couple of lucky rolls for sure. Uh, all right, so uh, we did the add me thing. Uh, yeah. You want to hire me to come out and cover an event for you, message me at csalmatova at gmail.com. And that's whether it's pool or anything else. I'm very talented. I can do different things. Let me know what it is you're trying to, uh, trying to stream, and, and I'll see if I can help you out. Let's go to the pool wisdom. What a shot. What a shot. What a shot. Uh, the more you swing in practice, the less you'll bleed in battle. Oh, man. My, like, both of my hands are patting my back right now. Like, you know how, how people have that, that little thing when you're hugging yourself? It's kind of like I'm hugging myself, but I'm just patting myself on both shoulders right now. Really good feeling for sure. I, I never won a Sunday Open. This is my first time winning it. So, nice feeling. 18 players I think we had today, and, and I found a way to win it. Uh, the, more sweat you <laughs> the more you sweat in practice, the less you bleed in battle. Get to those tables to become the champion within. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be times that you get challenged where you feel like, you know, maybe just time to walk away like I was. Um, just keep trying. Keep playing. You know, have faith in yourself. Um, understand that there's going to be days where you're going to have a tough time and you're going to want to quit. But if you don't quit and you keep playing, there's going to be days that you're going to get rewarded for all the other efforts that you put in before. Kind of like what happened to me today. Just put in your time. Work as hard as you can. Be dedicated. Don't give up. And you'll get there, I promise. Champion within. I'm waiting for you. All right. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that stream, make sure you like. And if you guys enjoy the quality of the stream on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. First time checking us out on Facebook, make sure you guys subscribe. We're not subscribed, but follow and like our Facebook page, Key Sports Live on Facebook. And then you'll get notified every time we go live on Facebook. But I'm telling you right now, 720p, they like to kick you off for copyrights. And it's laggy sometimes. So, you know, YouTube. <laughs> plus you make no money from facebook but from youtube i make some money from ads so by the way thank you to everybody that tunes in to watch the streams and then actually follows through with the ads instead of skipping them because that's when i actually get paid for the commercials if you guys skip them i don't so those of you that done that thank you those of you that didn't i understand man trust me i skip my own commercials sometimes too <laughs> all right that's it for now guys i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for liking and sharing the stream you guys are awesome i appreciate you guys tuning in i know there's lots of options for different things to do and different things to see but i always appreciate it when you guys tune in to watch the streams with me all right so uh add me or follow me on facebook if you want to make sure that you subscribe to the youtube channel don't forget to follow us on facebook as well and the boys in calgary have a main q sports live youtube channel is just q sports live you can subscribe to that one mine is cs oh sorry mine is rod Regatta. my name r-o-d-a-r-r-i-a-g-a-d-a -A -A, slash csl manitoba csl space manitoba which is uh q sports live manitoba all right that's it you guys are awesome man i hope you guys enjoyed it i played some decent pool today and it usually doesn't happen so enjoy the moment hopefully it comes back again sometime soon until next time thanks for tuning in guys have a good night everyone Cheers. Or wait, I should say it the way I like to say it. I will see you guys at the tables next time. 
Have a good night, everyone. Cheers. That's better, right? I know I can't stop talking, man. It's in my nature. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Cheers. Oh, wait. Sorry, I lied. I got to go back and do one more thing. I, wa I was going to go straight to it, but I forgot. And so this was updated because they had to explain this, but I have to make sure that I shared this. This is the second annual Moses Kappa Memorial Nine Ball Pool Tournament coming up on June 14th to the 16th in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan at Dooley's Billiards. To get into this event, you got to register through e-transfer or you can message them via email at kills2, kills t w o at gmail.com. They're running with BCA rules. It's a $110 entry. 32 players in the men's division is a limit, 24 for the women, race to seven on both, race to nine on the finals for both. They also have a junior tournament happening in Broken Rack, Regina, Saskatchewan, $25 entry for that one. Um, the men's single is guaranteed first place, $2,500, plus a jacket and trophy. And all the, and that's the money that they put, that money that they raised for the tournament, the $2,500 for first for the men's, the $1,500 for first for the women's. And then all the entry fee money that comes in, that all goes to second, third, fourth, and so on. So the more people that play, the more people get paid out. The money for first and second is guaranteed. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to miss it. I'm going to be able to stream it too. So if you're from Saskatchewan, you want to get on the stream and get in this tournament. Let me know that you were here, you watched this, and you want to be on the stream. And I'll get you on that stream. All right, that's it now, for real. I had enough. I'm tired, man. Usually, like, at the end of the night, I'll sit here and play some pool, but I'm done. I, might, I don't know. There's a few guys that want to play me, so I might shoot a couple of racks. But all right, have a good night, guys. That's it. Sacabo. Thanks for tuning in. See you at the tables next time. Cheers.